My name is Sharon Shattuck, and as a child, I had loved rocks and stones, and anything buried, I would uncover it. And one of the first things that I did was run through a woman's yard that was next to my home, and all around this beautiful, beautiful old oak tree, she had fossils. And I just thought the earth naturally planted them there. And so I proceeded to take one every now and then as I walked through her yard to go to my home. And one day, and I, what I would do is I would give them as gifts, Christmas gifts, birthdays, and I would actually end up doing, uh, you know, wrapping them in, in uh, comic strip paper, newspapers, and giving them as gifts with a little bow. And I was all of maybe five or six when this started. And uh, one day she stopped me and she said, honey, I've been around the world picking up those fossils. She goes, they're not there naturally. She said, those are my gifts to, to me in between. And I said, I am so sorry. I thought it was just a really great place to pick up good rocks. <laughs> So after that, I didn't do that, and I would go to the creek, and I would pr pick out fossils and so on. And then often things were gifted to me. So somehow I became uh, kind of like the patron of rocks, and um, they would talk to me in ways that, uh, you know, I just thought everybody talked to rocks. I thought everybody took pictures of rocks and later on, and I thought everybody noticed the spirit within rocks and crystals because they do have an actual spirit to them. And so my story begins that I think more than 50 times in the Bible, it states how go to the rock, stand on the rock, listen to the rocks because there are sounds from rocks, and also rocks make tones, and there are certain parts of the world where you can hit a rock with a hammer and it will make a very unusual loud tone and makes different tones as well and it, it's kind of baffled a lot of scientists still to this day so when they say go to the rock or listen to the rocks or watch the rocks and animals know if there's a movement within a rock then something is loose or something will fall or something's happening to the land and the Native Americans were very much a part of that. Um, they listened and they heard the earth move and they knew to move on or they knew when the river was going to widen and they would actually shift to another spot, wherever they were, where they were camping, where they were hunting, and so on. So they're very attuned to the earth as they naturally had to be for their own safety. But they also knew that the rocks hide wonderful, wonderful species of plants and also animals and creatures and that was another thing is they were very good at knowing where a specific spot was for an animal or a creature and some of them they they used as pets they actually had unique pets rather than kill them and some of them ate snakes and ate various things besides berries and other fruit so in the bible more than 50 times go to the rock stand on the rock and there is a special rock that was used by Jesus when he was resurrected. He was on a particular type of rock, and they call it the bloodstone, and they call it the healing rock. And the bloodstone does have red on it, which we'll see on the table in a minute, uh, in a little bit when we're done here, and we'll look at every rock that I have. But it's known as Christ's blood on the bloodstone, and it's a very healing rock. And sometimes when you hold it in your hand, it will turn white especially if you have cancer or if you have a liver disease or anything like that. Uh, some of these rocks will definitely shade differently and they actually turn. So it's the most natural and innate and obvious thing to do as a child is to pick up rocks. They are the same components in our body. So you've got minerals of phosphorus, iron, copper, zinc, magnesium, and these are actually in the rocks. That's how closely related we are to rocks. It's amazing, but it's true. So one of the things you can use is malachite. Malachite de detoxes the body, and it's a green stone, and you can use that. It also amplifies any other stone that you're wearing on you. So you wanna make sure that you know what you're doing with your rocks, inform yourself, educate yourself. 
And coral is great for anger. And I always recommend that for children. I work with children. And coral is great for anger because it's soothing. It's very, it softens you. And you wear it around your neck. Angel light also reduces anger. And it's blue for justice. Now, a lot of these stones have properties that can be quite dangerous as well, especially when people are mining them. So a lot of miners take their lives into their own hands and they develop lung diseases, skin rashes from all these stones that are taken out of our earth. And somebody said to me, well, are they meant to be taken out? I don't believe that large portions are. I do believe that certain ones that are more to the surface are better able to uh, possibly be gifted. But when you go underneath the ground, it stabilizes this planet. And that's how important they are is to their st stabilization, just like our whales hold the weight of the earth. And when you start killing the whales, the axis can possibly move along with removing huge chunks of crystals. So we'll move on to amethyst. And amethyst is for emotions. It's soothing to wear, and it's also soothing to put an amethyst chunk in a room. And of course, purple is a royal color. It was often used by royalty before it was even introduced to the layman person. Lapis is a metal, it's not a stone. And I'm wearing lapis, as I have it on here with my, my stone in my ring. It is actually copper based, it's very powerful. So lapis is a metal copper and it strengthens the body. Pearls reduce sadness. So pearls are a beautiful thing and pearls are developed through irritation. So it can actually irritate the body as well as soothe depending on your emotions. But it can soothe the body. And also because of its method, the, the uh, the diamonds also can be an irritation to the body, or they can also be a, a, a boon to lifting you up, to strengthening you as well, depending again how you, your emotions are. So the pearls are very sensitive, and diamonds are also. There's the John of God bed, which I've used before, and it's a very interesting experience where they take different colors, various colors, and also various crystals, and they put you on a bed, and you are for an hour under music and you just feel the various colors going off and you close your eyes. It is a very interesting experience and one of my friends in Australia took a picture and they did this in the basement of her home. And in her home she had four rectangle windows and in those windows you could see spirits of various kinds. I was absolutely amazed. I thought it was just the best picture and I couldn't bring it up again because it went off the internet, but it was on her site. And it was one of an Aborigine, one of a Native American, one of what you would call possibly an alien descent, and another one was uh, probably uh, someone who might have been um, possibly, you know, working in caravans and so forth, someone of ancient stock as well. Very fascinating. And so when I had my John of God and I was on the bed, my experience was that my legs were pulled and at first I had to open my eyes to see who did that. And I could feel something just draining right out of me. And then I could actually move my arms and my limbs better. And it was as if it was naturally doing the healing work, as light often does. Light through uh, stained glass is very healing. I have a friend who took a stained glass, um, oh, it's a, actually a round stained glass, had it put in their living room, and it's where the sun comes in. And they sit in their sunken living room while the rays comes down on them with different colors dur during the day. And that's her healing. That's her healing is the light coming through with the colors. And she sits in it and bathes herself in it. It's very beautiful. Very expensive, but also beautiful. So in Atlantis, the sun would pour in from stained glass windows, and they also had inlaid uh, amethyst and purple and different stones. So when the sun would hit off the columns of circular um, uh, temples that they might have had, the sun would actually gleam down that color as well. And you, would, you might sit in the center and be having like a moment where they are doing transformational healing because they did this way back then. 
So Atlantis and Lemuria had used stones as a way to take the solar energy right into your body. And there's a very old movie that I watched, oh gosh, maybe 25, 30 years ago. And it was a movie with some famous woman in it at the time. And it shows her bathing during the Atlantean times. And she's bathing in the light to rejuvenate her youth. And she uses, she said, the enzymes from the crystals and bathing in the light would actually create youth. And it did in the movie. So I found that an interesting movie that somebody had taken probably some form of history and actually uh, used that because it's partially true from what we understand in our history that they did this. So it drew in the vibrational frequency of the color in the stone. And you would be placed on, for instance, a rose quartz bed. They actually used solid beds of rose quartz and amethyst and so on and bloodstone and granite. Hi. Now, if you've ever gone to a cemetery, you will often see where there are granite and there is always a cat laying there in the cemeteries because the granite gives off an electrical pulse and it's very warming and soothing to the body. And so granite is conductor, a natural conductor, it feels good and it energizes you and the cats know this. So if you go to a cemetery and you see granite steps, sometimes take a look and see if a cat happens to be laying at it because I found it to be very true often enough. Sherry. Can you show the stones when you mention them? For um, those of not, us? No, I'm going to. Do, I, I'd rather have you. I'm going to do a talk after about that about the stones. I yeah. know, but when you mention like not, yeah. granite, um, you don't want to show it because no, we don't, I don't know have what the those. Granite. I don't have everything here. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, so, um, so they would work on you and use a, a similar form of Reiki. They didn't call it Reiki back then, but they would definitely move the hands and direct the light and direct the energy of the stones onto the body as well. Now there are fossils, and fossils um, such as amber, which I have on the table and I'll show you, and there's Native American uh, stones that I have that are also fossils. Now hermatite happens to be a silver uh, metal, which I don't have here, but people use that as a fertilizer. So you take your hermatite and you could put it in your gardens, mm -hmm. and people have been known to use it as a fer fertilizer. Just bury it and let Are it you go. Talking about hematite? Hematite, I'm sorry. Yes, hematite. Okay. Yes, that's right. So <laughs> it would be used in the yard as a fertilizer. fertilizer. And this was way back when that they did this. Now, weather obviously creates the stones as well. You've got volcanoes. Um, you have uh, all sorts of things, uh, crystals that are under trees. Now, ancient times, the Native Americans would actually plant trees and they would put crystals under them mm. at, when a baby is born as a child. And so they would program the crystal and then put it under the tree before they, they actually assist in planting new plants. So sometimes um, you may find in a, a very old field or a large field, if you took that tree down, there's some interesting things under that tree, and interesting stones, in fact. Um, let's see. So there are also rituals. Um, there's a new moon. So you could do rituals also with um, a, a lot of these stones they used as rituals during the new moon. So they would use a selenite wand. Um, they would use tiger's eye. And so this is how you would create a ritual. So you would plan for it, intend for it, and then you'll manifest it. And the way you would do that is you might have music like I do today. And then you would use the selenite wand and tiger's eye. And you would doodle first and draw first. Just draw anything your heart desires. So you don't edit it. You do not edit anything you ever do. Because often enough, that spontaneity is exactly where you're supposed to be. And it will really highlight where you are presently. So doodle and draw. And then write your dream down. Write what you hope to manifest. But you must doodle and draw first. And just meander creatively. Uh, you, can, you can color paint, whatever you want to do first. And then go on to the writing. Never do the writing first. Because you want to stimulate the imagination. And then you can use a moonstone that's held in your hand because 
some of the rituals perhaps are of the new moon, as I mentioned, but there's many rituals to do under any circumstances. And so with the new moon, you use a moonstone naturally because that's part of the, the wonderful moon. And you would hold it in your left hand. And then you can use a candle or a sage or anything else that you might want to burn to clear the energy, but you don't have to. And that's one of the rituals, one of the ways to do it. Now, I'm born under the new moon. So it says um, that being born during a new moon phase, you're naturally lucky. Well, I think I'm naturally lucky for everyone else because they always win. <laughs> I really haven't done much for myself, but um, so anyways, um, you know, they say that you love uh, music or art related things, which is very true. So a lot of times when you were born under a certain sign, um, there's lessons in that sign and they're like the fingers on your hand. Uh, you know, you would say astrology is all important, but it certainly is an aspect of your personality and one that you really shouldn't deny because it's very interesting um, how accurate they really are. You come in at a certain time and, and when everything is aligned at a certain time and place, it's exactly where you're meant to be, what you're meant to learn on this planet and how you adapt and how you react to situations. Very, very important. And those are the lessons. How do you react to certain situations? And once you can have self-control and use it to your advantage, and then usually there's a good outcome. So whenever you're kind, then kindness comes back to you, and kindness always brings a good outcome. Um, the other thing is take pictures up close of your crystals. Now I have a friend, and they have probably a thousand crystals. They collect them, we might say. But the problem with collecting so many crystals is that it's like a radio. You have so many frequencies and so many channels on all at once that it actually leaves you feeling very cluttered in the mind because they're very potent. I would tend to disagree with that. What was that? I would tend to disagree with that. Well, that, that's huge okay. huge collection of the crystals and as long as you put them in an order of balance. But he did. Then yeah. They would. That's what I was getting at. Okay. That's what I'm getting at. He had them in a suitcase and they were shut. And he wanted me to come and evaluate them and look them over and tell them what error they were and so forth, which I did. And um, he actually unbelievably listened to me and finally took them out and put them out in various places. And then it was better. But he had them kind of stored in this one area and he was always in this area and he was very chaotic energy. And I was like, not good. So now he does have them where they're out, they're getting re-energized, the mm -hmm. sun and so on, and near different plants and, and he seems to, it seems like he's more organized even, which is very interesting. But you don't want to have, I, I think what I'm getting at too is you don't need a lot of crystals to actually make and have what I call um, a really healthy lifestyle for the environment as well as for yourself. Um, if you have even one crystal that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis, you can program that crystal to do many things. Um, I, like to do, I do like to separate them. A crystal that I have for the earth, a crystal for myself. Um, I don't use that for anyone else. And then a crystal for other people that I can recharge. And there's many ways to recharge. You can put them in herbs. You can put them in, in rice. You can put them um, under running water. You can put them in the sun for a little bit. Now, something like this globe right here, you would not put in the sun because it amplifies the sun. And you wouldn't do that. It's like a magnifying glass. So it's one thing you would not put in the sun. Um, some stones, you have to know, you can't put in water because they're water soluble. A selenite is so, so bright in its, um, uh, the way it's tuned. And so you wouldn't put it in water, it will actually disintegrate it. So selenite is a very high vibration, but you cannot put that in water. So you ha again, you have to educate yourself on these, just like anything else. Um, so gems offer uh, longevity. They are a tool that rejuvenates the body and it elevates the soul. And it's positive ions, just like salt lamps would be. So they give off a wonderful uh, vibration frequency and you can feel it. You can absolutely feel it. And, and one of the things um, that you can feel it with, I love my honey calcite. And these have little rainbows and they're really beautiful. Um, and if you were to put, I, now I, I'll shine a light on some of these so you can see them. 
afterwards. But the honey calcite, having two in your hand, one in each hand, and just sitting with it, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Um, you cannot be sad with these honey calcites. They're a very happy vibration, and you feel it. And then the same way um, I have these. These are the lithium cords. And the lithium cords is, of course, the same thing that they use in um, pharmacies to elevate your mood. So you put those in your hand, and again, that's another entirely different feeling, is the lithium quartz offers a sense of stability and uh, with your emotions, and um, even health-wise, it helps to bring you back to a better balanced body. So I love my lithium quartz as well. Um, some of the things are very therapeutic, and one of them that you can get is this, and this is a jade roller. So I'm gonna bring that out and I'll show. And what you would do is you put oil on your face. You can use olive oil. Olive oil is great. It's all natural and it's great for anything all natural like this. And you would roll it up and down your skin to get the circulation going. And this also rejuvenates your face. Now the ancient Greeks used this, the ancient Romans used this. So this is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's just that it's been reinvented, brought back, and it, it worked. It really did work. You can use it on cellulite as well. You can use it up and down your, on your thigh or other parts of your body. So it's great for circulation and rejuvenating the skin. It has a smaller one. If you, and you, you know, if you want to do it under your eye a little bit and you're gentle, and it has the larger piece as well. <coughs> Another stone is the white jade. It's a little bit rare. And this has scalloped edges on it. And what you do with this is start it at the neck. And you can also start it even here at the collarbone and go up with your oil. And it can be almond oil, it can be any kind of oil that you, that you like. But it has the scalloped edges, it's a white jade, and this is wonderful to work with the skin as well. And someone else, if you can't reach your back, they can also do it and go up. Usually the circulation you wanna bring up towards the brain, towards the heart. So these are all the rage when I travel to Delaware and Maryland and all over. These uh, people are using these all over in our spas now. And also, as you know, the hot rocks that people use, the lava rocks, they're made out of lava. And um, they move those up and down the skin and all over the body. And they're wonderful too because you can actually heat those. And they'll maintain the temperature as if it's volcanic. So you will find that people will say, these are hot. You know, does this, is this uncomfortable for you or can you handle that with your body? So um, they actually maintain a lot of heat, some of these. Now, one of the gems that is really interesting, um, I didn't bring some of them. This is only some of my things. Um, but is a garnet. And you can have a garnet's... It doesn't matter whether they're polished or if they're in the raw, but the garnets now, scientists have found a couple of interesting things about them. And one of them is you open a garnet up and there is some live bacteria in there. The garnet is a New York State stone and it's a very interesting stone. It's very highly protective. Also, it's a passionate stone. Anything with red is, it has a little bit of passion in it, a little bit of fire, a little bit of heat. And so I like wearing that. Um, one of the things that I like too, which is here with my Native American rocks though, this is a fossil, which I'll show you my other fossils, but it's amber. And Native Americans used to take amber from trees and they would actually form them while they're still liquid, liquefied. They would wash them just like they made the maple syrup and they did everything else with the bees and the honeys. And they would take the amber and they would form it to their hands and they would take it and put it also in their feet. That's when the feet warmers and hand warmers originated. The very original, this holds and what's called the sun rock, even though it's not a true rock, it's from the tree, it's the liquid from the tree. And then it hardens into a resin. And this does have actual little bugs here, and I do have a magnifying glass on the table that you can look at that as well. Often a lot of amber, uh, especially the very old amber, does often have little creatures in it and little bugs and insects. The newer, there is newer, but still that's thousands of years. It's called the newer amber. Um, this is, uh, eh, it's not as old as some, but sometimes they don't have any of those features. 
but they're very beautiful. They'll have water droplets in them, and that's very beautiful. It reflects a lot of light. Um, the other thing is uh, very interesting is Australia has opals. And opals were made through underground water. The water gets into the opal and it reflects light, and then it creates all the rainbows and the colors. Very beautiful. Now, I have what I call vetiver, and I like using um, vetiver on the body. And I anoint, when I'm doing meditation, I anoint it and put it on the throat here, on the side of the cross, which is positive and negative and balancing. And so I use that vetiver um, for meditations, especially when I'm working with my stones and crystals. And some of them I program for the earth. So if there's a major storm coming, I try to work with that. Um, and if there's... Uh, I, I like to try to veer away storms inland as much as possible, but sometimes I seem to know how far inland they're going to come and there's no amount of stopping it. So, you know, sometimes I'm kind of given some kind of attunement and, and knowledge, like downloading knowledge, that certain things are going to happen regardless and, and reason, yeah. Um, I was going to say, with Bedivere, it's also known as a oil um, that helps it goes to the solar plexus, it belongs to the solar plexus, um, and it helps prevent attachments and energies entering into your system. It creates the barrier so that the spirit of the solar plexus can expand out. Thank you. So yeah. that avir is often used at that solar plexus, especially at night times. It helps you sleep and mm -hmm. stop things mm -hmm. from entering. Okay, that's another good area, is on the solar plexus. Yes, very good idea. Thank you. Um, let's see. Okay. So I'm trying to teach people when I work with these, and I've worked with children, I have worked in schools, I've gone to various places and have taught about these. Um, also, I belong to a gem and geology club. And I always say, veer away from prescribed learning any prescription that people give you because you have the innate ability to trust your inner compass to almost know how each stone will work with you if you will sit and spend time with it and that's the key is actually sitting and spending time with it one just one that's all you need and so you will actually learn what does that stone do what does it feel like does it have a smell is it sticky is it soft is it smooth is it rough and so on but once you analyze your stone and then sit with it, you're going to be amazed that they actually will give you information about themselves. Um, I love working with crystals because obviously they're a little clearer and you can get a little more information. These Native American stones are a little bit slower. They're a little bit sleepier. So you have to spend time with them and kind of get to know them. And, and they'll tell you their history. They honestly will. It's the most amazing thing. I'm not the only one who does this, so... <coughs> so crystals are a helpful influence. Some are gentle and some are really fast energy, but you'll know it when you put them in your hand. Now, when it's uh, very, very hot out, one day I did not have a air conditioner, and it was 100 degrees that day. And I took my selenite wand, and this is the, let me see if I have a selenite. Um, well, I have a very shape, so this is a selenite, and you can also put this pyramid in the third eye and do a meditation or just relax for 10 or 15 minutes with that. But um, the selenite, this is part of it, it actually created some kind of cooling system within my entire body. And when I woke up, I still had the wand near me, and it had absorbed all the heat, and I was cool. And I thought to myself, how can that be? I know it's, it's just absolutely humid and hot. I had no air conditioner, I wasn't um, ready for the heat, heat wave, and it was amazing to me that I actually stayed cool. Now, I have the sunny night wand, and it's about this long, and, um, but again, I was gifted with a huge one, um, because people do gift me with things like this, and, it's, and they're amazing. The selenite wand will actually cleanse your crystals. So if you have a big wand of the selenite, which is kind of like a milky, creamy look, you can set your crystals on it, which I have, and it helps to cleanse them. Now you can set, set all of your crystals around this type of music, your meditation music, certain talks that you want. It will actually feed into them. It will actually amplify the energy and information, and it will, they will store that information. 
They can hold a lot. And there is an ancient talk about how when you go on the other side, you can also choose to incarnate as a crystal to stabilize the earth, to be an energy, or to actually be given to someone, and they and, and you teach them. So they're, they're called crystal spirits. And uh, I do believe that, actually. And this particular piece is an Atlantean piece, Lemurian piece, Lemurian seed. And they have ridges. The Lemurian seeds will have ridges. And you can program them by actually putting your hand on one side and starting here. So this side I want for healing. The other side I want for to take care of my children. The other side it'll be for another purpose. And you just need to remember how you're programming that. And you, you stay with it for a while and you rub it and you look at it and you take pictures of it. And you really try to see what the spirit's about. Who is it? Where did it come from? And sometimes when you actually look in these, you'll see mountains and you'll see terrain. And you will almost see exactly where this was pulled from. That's how amazing they are, but you really have to take the time, just like a little child, to get to know them. And they're amazing pieces. And this one has like a pink tinge to it, the Lemurian ones. <clears throat> so, for instance, for this crystal ball, we'll talk about this crystal ball. This is from Indonesia. Uh, there aren't many of these left, actually. This is very, very old. It was gifted to me by a man who makes furniture. Or, I'm not furniture, I'm sorry. He makes jewelry. And this came from Argentina. This is a meteorite that he made. And it's really beautiful on the back of it, the way he finished it. And it's silver. And he makes his own jewelry. Um, but this is one of his pieces. And he also had another piece that I didn't bring. It's, much, it's quite large, actually. And this is like an Andara, and Andaras come from the Sierra Mountains of California, and they also come from Indonesia. So I have two very ancient Indonesia ones, and this is one of them. You will see seeds through it, and you can even see a flower blossoming within it, which you can take um, the magnifying glass and you'll see that. And also, when I hold the light on it, you can see all the, the I don't know if you can see that through here, how it lights up and then you'll be able to see it. Um, these are also in Dara's here. I don't know if you can see that. And they were gifted to me as well. Um, this one is a special piece because this one has what they consider, they call it the Mother Mary Stone. Um, she was taken to Bimini and all over, um, and she was also a gift. And she's on the outside, you'll see this woman who's praying when she's looking over. And this is called an Andara also. Andaras have a different property than um, obsidian or any glass volcanic um, material. And it has different properties. It can have gold on it. It can have, uh, like this one, um, it has a special piece on it. I don't know if you can see that. But it has this coating on it. And the coating can have platinum, gold, it can have every mineral under the sun right on that, coated on that. And it's been scientifically proven. So this is a Andara. Um, I have been gifted with these. They weren't anything that I knew about in the beginning. Uh, the first piece I got was from a child and I wondered, I thought it was a piece of glass. And so I gifted it to my stepfather who has recently deceased and put it outside of his house for 10 years. And one day, I typed up by accident, supposedly, of course, there's no, no accidents, and Andara. And it came up the same stone that I have. And I thought, see, yeah, I've seen that stone before, or crystal, whatever it is. And I looked at it again, and I read about it, and I go, oh my god, I have an Andara. I have an ancient Andara, which I didn't bring because, again, she's large, and she's heavy. Um, but it doesn't matter the size of it. But it has seeds in it also. And that's from the Sierra Mountains of California, I found out. And it's very, very beautiful. But it didn't crack, it didn't break in 10 years, out in the sun, out in the cold, out in the heat. You know it's not glass. <laughs> so it has a very, very sturdy property. Um, I don't think I was ready for the Sandara, which I use for the earth and earth sto storms, because I wasn't ready for it and I gave it away. Like, oh, it's a piece of glass. 
And it'll probably break out there, but when I noticed and recognized what it was, I shook it. My stepfather and mother were home, and the next day we had a huge party, and my stepfather said to me, Sherry, you will never believe it. Somebody stole that, that <laughs> rock outside of my house. I can't believe it. And my daughter nudged me and she says, she says, this one's all yours. And, she, and I had to tell him, no, no, it was me that, that a child had given it to me. And I, I was hoping to have it back. And, and what happened, what's so interesting, is the set of circumstances. I saw the girl that actually gave this to me 10 years later at an ice cream stand. And she said, do you still have the rock? And I'm thinking, gosh, it's at my mother's house. Then, I didn't even think about it then. Then, within that same week, though, that's when the Andaras came up, and I started reading about them. And then I said, I have to have that back. But I wasn't ready for the Andara yet. And that's what's so interesting. I finally was. And that's when the knowledge came to me of what it was, who it was, and what I was to use it for. So the Andaras are very, very special. This one almost looks like it was melted by some kind of meteorite or whatever impacting. I don't know if you could see this, but it looks like it was almost melted. And it has very different colors. It's got the beautiful gold in it. And it's just really lovely and green, emerald green. Um, I don't know if you could see that part there. Very pretty, very pretty pieces. You have separate pieces of those. You do, yeah, they're beautiful. They are, yeah. I love them. Now this one here is called one of the ancients and this ha actually has the phantom. It's recreated itself several times and you'll see several phantoms. So this is a smoky quartz. Um, I have more of these similar ones and I call these the ancient ones because they are. They're the granddaddies and the grandmas and um, I use this to program. There's little crystals inside on top of here too. It's really very beautiful on the inside of these. Very, very pretty. Now when, I might have a day where I'm agitated and a lot has gone on, so I use these. And these are the lingams from India. And they come from the riverbeds. And they really still don't understand quite the properties of these or what they were used for, how they were totally formed because they're so ancient. And it seems like everyone has one of these, but they're so very grounding. So when I have a day that I just need to relax, I put my hands in rice and I squeeze the rice and then I shake them out and get all the energy, any, any negativity off me, and then I'll hold this, you know, with two hands and I'll just sit with it. And that's all I need to do. And I seem to be more grounded and calmer after that. Okay, go back to here now. Um, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna tell you about my crystal ball here and then I'm going to mention the crystal ball and what to do with it because everyone should have a crystal ball they're just beautiful keep it out of sunlight though and it likes to be in a nice velvet pouch it, it, it really enjoys being cared for as most of these crystals do they like to be um, top shelf they like to be your special friend and so they like to be on a velvet cushion whatever you could do but they really like special treatment they really appreciate that believe it or not so with, with a crystal ball, you're going to stare in and outside of it. So you're going to stare around it, and you're going to do all this slowly. It's not something that you do quickly, fast. You really enjoy this moment of, and you know, you can also be dreaming, or your imagination can take you elsewhere. That's okay. But at some point, you're going to find out a lot of information about that crystal ball, and you're going to see some things in it that you didn't think was possible. It's a device that allows a focused momentum and it sends you messages of a divine force. It really does. <coughs> so you can use that, stare at it inside and out, soften your gaze, look inside it, do everything slowly, and it's as if you're suspended in time when you use a gazing ball. That's an Andara. Uh, by the way, and it will give you messages of a divine force. Now we have more solar radiation coming in. It's called the Van Allen Belt. And so all the colors and the lights that we see in the sky right now, it's displayed in the skies because we have more solar radiation. So when you now use the sun to clear these rocks, 
or even the crystals, you want to be careful they don't crack because we're having more and more energy coming in. So you won't want to do it as long because the sun is changing and we're also mutating so that we can handle that sun. Not that you want to bathe in the sun as long as you did, you don't. You want to be extra careful now. But we will be able to mutate. We might even have extra chromosomes. Um, we're, we're actually going through an evolutionary stage of development. Right now, we're all in it. Some can handle it more than others better, and some are a little more fatigued. Um, some of them um, aren't uh, getting as much rest and so on. But what happens is, eventually, most humans will actually be able to be a lot healthier through all of this. As we transmute and transform, we will be more resistant to bacteria and more resistant to a lot of other things coming in, viruses, for instance. Now, the one thing that I love that I use on my body, um, so, so our bodies will transmute to accommodate more radiation, but I suggest wearing a shungite from Russia. And I use this little stone, and you can put it anywhere on your body. It's just a black piece of stone, and I like it on my body. I even keep it in my, uh, in my perhaps in my bra and I can keep it in my pocket. Um, I also had people wrap it for me, and I have a piece that I, I wrapped and I wear it as well. These are great in water, um, and it's for any electrical, you know, you can put it next to your computers, next to your cell phones, keep one in your purse as well, or in your wallet. They're, they're, they actually work, they have been proven scientifically in Russia to work, and I did a lot of research on these, and this is the number one stone you want right now with what's going on. You can also place them anywhere in your home, so you can get a pyramid of one of these um, and keep that near your bed, if you ha especially if you have a, any electrical outlets near you. What's the name Under again? Under your bed, Shungite from Russia. How do you spell that? S-H-U-N and then the guy. G-I-T-E. It does many, many things for you. Yes, it does. But, uh, the one thing that I tell people about is it will clear your water. Yes, you can drop this in your water, or you can even place it on the outside. It'll still do the work. It actually energizes you as well as clear the water. Yeah. It's 95% it's, it's, carbon. Yes, it's 95% It's 5% short of the diamond. Mm -hmm. It's that next stage before it mm -hmm. moves to the diamond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love these. I, I would recommend that everybody, especially with what we're going through, is to use Shungite. So crystals channel rays from the stars and the sun. And in the Atlantean times, this is what they did. They actually used the stars as well. So you think, oh, you know, I'm getting uh, the rays of the sun. But if you were to use your eyes at night and look at the very brightest uh, star system, the northern star, which was um, available during Jesus' time, the Deneb um, star. And um, if you were to, to use that with your crystals outside, um, they will actually get the starlight as well. And that's equally important, even for our eyes. When you gaze at a star, you're actually gathering information from that star. And people don't realize how, how, um, how potent this energy is. But the Atlanteans, the Lemurians knew. And so they would actually use the stars and the sun to do their work with their crystals for healing, for rejuvenation, for helping the land and the earth and fertilizers, which again, you can also use them. Um, one of the things that I like is a vocal crystal. Um, I have one only, but this is another type of crystal. Th these cr crystals only have one end, which is a healing wand. But the vocal is, it has a little bit of a different curve, but these are similar, and they're cut all along the sides. And I got these in New York City, um, but I use them for healing. And one of the ways to do it, and there's so many ways for healing, so this is just one way, and it's, it's the method that I use, but you can use many ways to heal yourself through these crystals, and you can inform yourself through various books and so on. Um, one of the methods I use is I take the point, and I'll point it to where the pain is, and I take a deep breath, and I let it suck out, and then as I'm pulling away, I, let the, I release the breath, and I'm taking it out, it's taking another air, you know, and you can... To activate your crystals, you could first rub it like this. 
You can also take it in your hand and do little figure eights. The infinity sign. And this gets it activated. I love using the infinity sign. Now it seems like you're doing nothing with this, but you'd be amazed at what you're stirring up in this little crystal. And then again, draw in your breath, let it out. Let it take away the pain. And once you become adept at doing this, you'll actually see results. At first, it's hard to believe, but if you don't believe, you don't get to believe either. <laughs> and that's, that's the truth, the actual truth of the nature of anything that you're working with. If I give you the top brand of vitamins or anything else for your body, and you don't believe it'll work, your body will suppress it, and it won't work for you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, these really do work, but you have to also believe in them. And then you'll get to see that it's not magic. There's practical applications in these. One of the things that we talk about is the organite, and this is a pyramid, and it's a energy generation which amplifies intention energy, and it neutralizes um, the disruptive environmental energies. So I put this near my television, I put them near my telephone, and I put them anywhere where there's a lot of noise outside around my home. So they are made of like a lucite covering some of them. And again, not everybody, some of them are homemade. They're made of a little bit different properties. Other people use clear lucite, others use colored. They inlay them with stones on the outside, for instance, a shell, maybe a seashell that's pretty. Um, they do all sorts of things, but there's metal in here, metal properties as well. So you might have a touch of gold, you might have turquoise, and a lot of other um, stones inside of one of these especially the larger pieces. And again, you can also use that on the third eye to just calm you, to just take in information. And it, if you calm and quiet your mind, you can take in a lot of more information than you can realize. And when you meditate with it, you'll find it to be very productive. You'll find it very interesting what you um, actually wake up with and thoughts that you actually wake up with or just when you zone out. They're very similar to the ones that the Victorians used to make with uh, the lucite and the flowers, um, which they then created as brooch, brooches, mm -hmm. brooches and mm -hmm. pins and rings. Yes. Um, we would have seen them about in the 1950s. Parents would have been wearing them, often been given as Mother Day gifts. Yes. Um, and, you know, had the properties of a real flower. Mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're just, I, I did find them to work. I saw the energy field myself. Um, sometimes I'm able to see energy and it's wavy and it's in waves. Now, you know, for instance, we've all seen this probably. If you look at um, a hot pavement on a hot day, you'll actually even see the heat waves rise. Well, I can see those naturally and I saw them naturally work through this. So there is, it does work. It's an interesting property that you don't, you think, oh, that's just another old thing, but it does actually work. Um, this one was discovered by a little boy. It's called the Mother Earth Stone, and it stimulates the life force and the will to live. So those people who are depressed, those people who are thinking of suicide, this is a beautiful property to wear and hold and even to put it on your body or your solar plexus, especially when you have anxiety or sadness or even your heart. So it assists us on the path towards our journey and our goal. And Mother Earth stones tell us that we are made in the image of God and that we are created always for a purpose and that there's a reason that you have a life and that's to sustain it and enjoy it as well. It's also been used to heal the earth after natural disasters. So people have taken this, thrown it in the ocean, and they actually see these interesting little waves that actually curl up where this ends up. And, it, and they've done some studies on it, but a little boy actually was the first one to say, this is for Earth. This is an, uh, one of the Earth properties too. And so from there, they found it to be used for the higher good of all. And, uh, and what's the name, the Mother Earth Stone? It's called Mother Earth Stone. That's just the name? Yeah. Not another Discovered by a little Does boy. it have another name or just the? No. That's all we know, yeah. 
Now the Herkimers are a New York State stone, and I just love, I love my Herkimers. Um, they're very special. They do crack. They can break very easily, especially when I sleep under them. They love to crack, and they crack open. So um, I don't really sleep, put them under my pillow, but that's me. I have a lot of energy, so that probably does that. They have wonderful rainbow colors in them. Um, I'll take a flashlight. I love to use my flashlight to show people because they're really gorgeous. And they have little rainbows inside them. I don't know what we can see here. Or, and this is the other side of it. But on top, there's little rainbows. Very beautiful. They're all called diamonds? Yeah, they're called diamonds. Um, they come mm. inside the earth, and there's a lot of pressure with these. But it says your Herkimer diamond is a doubly, well, the one I have is doubly terminated quartz. Um, it's not this particular one, though. Um, it has high brilliance, clarity, and so on. Um, today they can be found over uh, a 10 by 50 mile belt covering Herkimer, New York, and um, Fulton, and also a few other places, St. Johnsville and Middleville, New York. The best uh, specimens are found on predictable levels in pockets of dolomite limestone rock. Um, loose crystals can be sifted from the topsoil, and loose crystals in their natural uh, form are readily adaptable for jewelry making. So a lot of these are become jewelry. Um, and crystals still attached to the rock matrix are the most desired by the pure collectors throughout the entire world. <laughs> but what they do, the Herkimer is one of those pure crystals. It's delightful. It truly is. And they are, um, I was there and I actually picked up one, which I'm going to tell you the most interesting story. It is the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest Herkimer found, they said. <laughs> they had never found a whole tiny, tiny one. I saw a glint, and I'm not kidding you, it was about a half a mile away, because when I had started um, trying to pick up my own and do it, um, I didn't pick up anything. And then I saw in the sun, about a half a mile away, I said, look at that glint over there. And somebody said, oh, that's beautiful. That's got to be a big rock. Wait until I show you what I found, because it's amazing. And you don't know, we'll, we'll try to pick it up. This is one of the most purest, tiniest Herkimer's found. And I will show it to you. It's on my hand. I don't really know if I have anything. Um, I don't know if you could. And let me get the flashlight because you need to see this. I saw this almost a half a mile. And when I got up close to it, I could not believe that's all I had. <laughs> mm -hmm. There it is. And that was shimmering in the sunlight like it was huge. Can you see it there? No. Oh, it's so one. tiny. Look how tiny that is. Oh, yeah, it's wait, super, super tiny. But that's how brilliant it's shown. And a friend <laughs> saw this and said, I cannot believe that you saw that and how tiny that is. He said, I would have never guessed that was what, you know, but I'll show you. <laughs> when you pop those pockets open, uh, I'm Doug Herkimer's, when you pop those pockets open, the druses inside of them, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they've released <clears throat> because they form on the inner side of the pocket, they will actually finish forming and drop down inside there. So if you're very careful, you can find some even smaller than that wow. down in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. The thing with Herkimer's is it's very temperature change reactive. If there's a sudden change in temperature, yep. they will break. Yes. yes. So when you when you dig them out of the ground, the ground mm -hmm. being much cooler, yep. you have to have a bucket full of water to put them in, yep. or some of them will shatter after you take them out. Yes, you they will. You have to acclimate them slowly. I don't know if you want to show them. But these Herkimers are very pure. Um, there's very little, very little um, uh, inclusions in them, and they're brilliant, and they're beautiful. And um, they kind of came to me afterwards. They were gifted to me. There's a lot of iron where they form. Some of them come out golden colors, mm -hmm. some of them come mm -hmm. out gray. They'll yep. have uh, different things trapped inside of them, just like a fossil sometimes. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, um, the Herkimers, um, I wear them to amplify my, I have a Moldavite that I'm wearing. So I have, these are, um, the, first of all, this is the meteorite, and then I have a moldavite that I amplify the meteorite with, and this is the moldavite. I don't know if you, can you see the green coming out of that? And then this is a little Herkimer here that I have um, 
on the side of it. I don't know. Do we see that? Do you see the little one? The little, <laughs> is it there or not? The little one, yeah. Yeah, is and it, that's a little Herkimer. Is it the Moldavi also come from Meteor? The star, Meteor? yeah. Meteor? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yep. So I use these. Yeah, I know, but it comes from Meteor. Now, not everybody can wear these all together the way they are. It's a very powerful combination, so I had to work up to that. Because the Moldavite, you will actually feel it's very fast energy coming in quickly. You will feel the heat from it. Some people get a flush from it. And the first time that I, a friend of mine, and I picked it up, and the person that owned it said to me, what, what do you feel when you hold that rock? What do you think it is? And I said, I actually see it going through space, flying through space with fire. He goes, you got it. I said, what? I said, is that a meteorite? I said, I would have never guessed. But yeah, it's and that was my first introduction to Moldavite. Mm. You can burn it just like amber. I mean, yes. you can make, they make incense with it. Well, the Indians knew that pyrite, um, when striked by a metal, will make fire. So that's what they did, is they actually took the silver pyrite and they struck it with metal, and there they had their fires very quickly, very easily. They didn't sit there and twist like everybody thinks they did with those little sticks to get the <laughs> fire. Awesome. No, awesome. they were smarter than that. <laughs> they were a lot smarter. They, had, they knew what the properties were and how to work everything. We, you know, people don't give them credit. The Native Americans are extremely brilliant. They really are. Uh, let's see. So the Deneb star system was during Jesus' birth, and that's where you can do your crystals. When you see that northern star in the wintertime, you can utilize that with your crystals to gather up the information from the stars as well. Now the Vogel crystals are very special crystal. I didn't bring it, but you can go to um, earthkeeper.com or you can go to special shops, and you can also get them through them. Um, Six-sided crystals are a healing wand device. And then I have them up here when I have bring you up. Um, the six-sided, when you, when you count these sides here, they're a good healing device. And so you want to count your sides. Also, some of the crystals will have little triangles in them. And those are the record keeper. Those are very special because you'll download the history and the information of what that went through and also the era that it was grown in. It's very interesting. One of the things that I have that I absolutely love is the purity of the Tibetan crystals. The Tibetan monks actually brought these over, praying all the way from their country, and they prayed and held on to these to bring them back to, some of them came to the United States, to bring them back to the United States. And I have a few of these. And this is called a rocket ship. When you see the, how it looks like it's forming a rocket and the fuelage coming off it, it's really a very special crystal because it even soars that much faster. So any of your dreams, any of your intentions, and it's very beautiful. It's, and it always has a little bit of a black speck from the land inside of it. So you'll see this black quartz and, and other um, debris inside of these. And this is um, a little broken on the back side. Oops, oops sorry, sorry, that's okay. <laughs> but see, it wants to fly. It's very, very, <laughs> it's a little sassy today. Okay. <laughs> So um, this is double terminated, it broke a little bit, but this is also from Tibet. And a monk carried this and prayed on it. So it's a very special pure energy. And when I want to really find my source again, any negative energy that I have or thoughts of anything or anyone, I make sure that I kind of utilize these and just sit with them, just relax. Maybe go into a rocking chair, um, you know, something very comfortable, very safe, and I enjoy these. So those are from the monks. This one is the granddaddy one. And this is very ancient. And I will put this there. Um, as you can see, it has a protective coating on it. But it's, it's, it's one of the oldest rocks that they find is this particular one. It's very expensive, even though some of it's broken, because you don't find that protective coating on them very often in the top. And this is a granddad, they call them. And they have many different properties and minerals, and they have, um, they actually have uh, some rainbow material in them from water being growth when, during their growing, and very beautiful. Um, this one I use actually for bringing in uh, healing energy from the sun. So this one is used actually directed at the sky. It can actually be used, believe it or not, to possibly eradicate certain chemtrails. 
it has worked. And I got Certain it from what? Uh, chemtrails. And I got it from um, someone whose name is Sri. And Sri is um, a very special person, and this is one of his favorites um, that he kind of bequeathed to me. Um, this is called a twin, uh, a twin, because a twin soul. And when you want to have gatherings, and when you want to put a crystal and put it in, and as you can see, it's not alone, and it's a bridge to communication. And I like this one put in my social area of the dining room or perhaps the kitchen, depending on where I'm at. Um, there, this one is called K2, and it's one of the highest mountains um, that you'll find, and it's a very beautiful stone. And again, I don't think many people even think about this, but it's very dangerous when you mine or when you try to extract these stones. You're going through horrendous weather, often high winds, often uh, hail storms, anything can come up, uh, lightning striking. Um, when you go to a very high place, where this stone is gathered, the weather is incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Um, and often comes up, the storms will come up right out of nowhere. And these people have to take shelter right away. And it's, it's very difficult to, to mine these or to take these from the earth. Now, what do you call those? K2. I call them just K2. There's, there's other names for them, but K2. Now, the rose quartz is a very special quartz. And anybody can have one. Um, I liked it, the different shapes of some of the rocks. Um, some people like them natural, like I have my crystals that are very natural, and some people prefer a natural stone. But it doesn't matter. Even this polished one will give you uh, give off energy and take in energy. Um, this particular one, whenever you have heartbreak, whether it's you know you've lost a person through death, or um, but actually there's life after life, so it's not a true death. There's no no dying. But I want to say that if you're grieving because they're no longer physically with you, and you put this on your heart, oftentimes the pink quartz will turn white. It actually absorbs your grief, and it works. It, I've done it with many of my quartz. And I also have a raw one that I got from a museum. And you can purchase some of these things that I have did come from museums. So this is very special, and anyone can have a rose quartz. Um, again, this is a different shape. And you can see that it has um, lovely highlights in it. But this is another stone. And I love all the different shapes that these crystals can come in. And it's not easy to ever cut these. So some are cut from Brazil. Um, I didn't bring my collection, but I do have um, some from Brazil and so on. And they're very beautiful. Love the, the shapes of them. Now skulls. Let's talk about skulls. Because most people don't like skulls. And they're almost even afraid of skulls. The Mexican like them because of the Day of the Dead and they honor and they use skulls. But a lot of people are almost frightened by them. There's something mysterious about these. But they actually, you can put them, not everybody, but I, I do know a lot of my friends will not take a skull. They don't want a skull for some reason. Now, a skull is actually like your best friend. And you can put it up to your forehead and actually take in information that way or program it. And it's, it's got a flat end and it actually feels good, especially if you have a headache. I like using my skull when I have a headache. And it actually works to take away the headache. But it also is the shape of the skull because it deals with the mind. And it actually heals, can help heal tumors. And I'm not saying, you know, we're not, we're not talking about overnight, we're not talking about something miraculous, but it helps. <coughs> Every bit of these actually help. It's a healing tool. And when you use properly, if you talk to it, you'll also, like I said, you will download information. Put it right on your forehead if you have a headache. And, and watch it become your best friend. I didn't like skulls, but these little ones are potent enough. You do not need a big skull, although they're lovely to have too. <laughs> the skulls are often considered to be the ancestral energy, so yep. that helps with that communication. Mm -hmm, they are. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Now, this was given to me by a friend who lived in the Dominican Republic, and this is uh, Larimar. Um, people pronounce it a couple of different ways. But I like my Larimar. This is an ancient piece that was brought in through the ocean. And it, it comes from the ocean. And it started out with a gentleman finding it with his daughter. 
And then he said, yeah, this is really beautiful. I bet people will like this. And so on cruise ships was where it started, where they started um, selling these was on cruise ships for the Bahamas and all over. And then it gradually became known to all the other areas and people were purchasing it for their uh, specialty shops. And I love the jewelry. I, I love holding it. This is a very ancient piece. Who knows what that cornerstone of what could have been. You know, there could have been a, a goddess or something on top of this. I mean, we don't know. Is it part of a step? Is it, what is that a part of? But he got this from the ocean for me and brought it back to me. And I love that piece. Maybe and it looks like this is granite, some form of granite. Part of Atlantis? Pardon me? Part of Atlantis? Yes, yeah, that's, that's what they think also, yes, yeah. But one of the places that's really cool is Arkansas, and we can talk about that in a minute, and then I'll go through the Native American things quickly here. Um, so, so six-sided crystals are healing wine devices. And the crystals from Tibet I showed you, which are meditation pieces, are great pieces to meditate with, anything from there, because the monks carried them from where they were to here safely. Um, and they prayed over them, and they're wonderful to have in your home as well. And they, there's copper crystals, color, light, heat, electromagnetic fields of various planets that constructed machines at one time. So they used color, light, their crystals, they used the light, and Atlantis, and they use this to construct their machines, whether it's a flying machine, whether they did have flying machines, or whether it's a vehicle on land. So the Druids built Stonehenge, Avery, and um, let me see if I have that one. Um, this one here, and that's the blue stone of Stonehenge. And I love this too. It's a small piece, but I, I actually do carry that in my breast pocket if I have a shirt. Um, I love carrying this. It's beautiful energy, very ancient, and just a very simple piece. And this is a Merlin stone, and it has various shiny properties on it. And I like this. Um, it can be called a magic Merlin or, or whatever. There are many names also for this. A lot of these kind of carry different names, but um, this one, you know, they think this was the stone of, of Merlin, um, that it was a property from way back when. And so I like to hold a piece of antiquity with me, and this is one of them. And it does make you feel great. Um, it's very soothing, very kind stone. I like that one. Now I have ancient ones, um, and this is a very ancient one. Um, it comes by various names. Uh, I did forget the name of this, but um, it's interesting property of metal and other things, and they're somewhat rare. Is that a kidney oil? What is that? A kidney oil? No, no. This is a specialty one from the desert or something like that, which shouldn't be, but yes, it is, and it's, it's odd. The one thing I wanted to bring was my yellow stone, but I don't see it here from the desert. Um, and these are, the uh, Native Americans use these, and you have a female, and you have the male. And the male is bristly, and the female is smooth. <laughs> now, they like to be loved, or they love to be loved. And the problem with these, because I have a problem with them, is they're not cheap. And they are disappearing on me because they love heat and they love sun. And I haven't put them out in the heat and the sun. And so they actually will disintegrate and they've gotten smaller and smaller over time. So they love to be kept right next to you. And when, they're, when I hold them or I keep them, they seem to maintain their shape. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they like being held. And they like the heat and the warmth of the human beings. So these are the specialty what Native Americans, the male and female. Um, is it boji balls, I think, or something? Is it called? Um, the boji balls are different. Okay. Uh, those are one of the... They're like a pair of shaman stone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they're no longer allowed to actually cultivate them anymore. Okay. So yep. they're, they're, there's been an embargo put on them. Okay. Yeah, well, mine are, are disintegrating if I don't start wearing them or carrying, keeping them in heat. But this is another property. This is a very unusual one. It has a reddish or almost tint to it. Um, and this is an interesting property as well. It's very heavy. And it has a square um, on it, on the bottom of it. It's actually a square. And then it, look at the different shapes it forms on it. Um, people tend to not know what this is. Um, because it has some un other unusual properties to it. So, but I, I was gifted with that. Um, 
let me see, I wanted to go into a couple more things before we start with the Native Americans here. Um, so Onyx helps with skin problems. So uh, that's one of those that are very readily available is the Onyx. And I like it for skin problems. And you can also use it to rub the skin. Again, uh, just like the Jade Roller or anything. Um, let's see if there's anything else. The crystals that are used for EMF protection, for insomnia, fatigue, muscle pain, um, are the iron stones, like hematite, pyrite, lodestone, black tourmaline, and the um, shungite that I showed you, the black shungite. Uh, okay, now we can also work with, um, so for money, happiness can buy money. Soul nourishment, positive energy. A lot of times with money, we have a problem with that. So I didn't bring my jade, my jade is home but I have a slab of jade. And that is one of the things that you can put your money underneath or on top of it. And supposedly it multiplies and it's really kind of nice. It seems to do something. Um, and it's, it's really a nice piece to have is a piece of jade and then put money, um, green money underneath that. Um, the, key, the clear quartz points are for amplifying outward, what you want outward. Um, green, Anything green gives you courage. So um, any, anything that is green is good for courage if you want to have something on you, like malachite, anything like that. Now, um, for abundance, green was used a lot by Mother Teresa. And she had jets. People don't really know that she was a, quite a wealthy woman. She was given jets and all sorts of things so that she was able to go about her business and do it well. While well, she maintained health. Uh, Van Gogh liked green very much so, uh, but I don't know that it worked for him very well. <laughs> um, the Moldavite is expansion on steroids, which is what I have on me here. And the Moldavite does come from uh, outer space or out of our area. And uh, it's like kryptonite. So when, it, like I said, start slowly with wearing this, and then you can put it with a meteorite, and then you can put it with a Herkimer. And those are very powerful once you work up to that. Purple is organized, it's royalty, and um, I like just using an amethyst for that, it's great. Um, blue is the ether, or the ether, or the blue sky, and it disperses stress, so anything blue is good. Angelite, um, it gives you the feeling of flying, like you're flying out of here. Celestite is a good one. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, many cultures use these stones for so many things. And that's why you have Stonehenge and you have other places. They use them to meditate. Um, they use them as a place to worship. They use them in so many different various forms. And they also use them as a church, their columns. It was almost like going to church. Merlin the famed wizard advised not to scoff at the power of rocks. And he advised King Aurelius, laugh not so lightly, king, for not lightly are those words spoken from these stones. For in these stones is a mystery and a healing virtue against many elements. So Merlin knew that, the wizard. So we use the spa treatments. So there's rocks in Japan, and they use them for bathing. And they lie on the stones, such as black silica um, in northern Japan. And it's known as the phantom ore. And its rarity emits infrared rays. So it dilates the blood vessels. It breaks down toxins that flush out the body, and they give off the negative ions from your body. You can also walk on pebbles. Believe it or not, I every once in a while in the winter time, when I'm really, really super tired, I take my pebbles out and I will walk on them, just like you were walking on sand, a bed of sand. And it rejuvenates the entire body. It's like a little mini massage. So you can also do that. And it also helps with balance. So anybody that's out of balance, um, drink lots of water and then walk on these pebbles, and it will help to put you in shape and in balance again. Uh, let's see. Agates protect from stress, stomach problems, and so on. And the amethyst, we know, is very spiritual, holy, and helps with drunkenness, which a lot of people don't know. So if you are drunk, get your amethyst out. What does it do? Amethyst. Yeah, it works. Now, there's beauty treatments with your rocks. So you can use sea salt, baking soda, um, magnesium, uh, trace minerals um, and a top, tub of hot water and then you blot the skin and you soak and you tumble stones in it. You can use serpentine and rhodonite. Um, the serpentine is from Russia 
And that's a beer, it's a green stone, um, and it has a nice little glass to it. Um, and this is from Russia, and it's a beautiful stone. It's not real expensive, but it's not, certainly not cheap either. And it's a beautiful stone to work with. And sometimes it looks like it has angel's wings on it coming out of it. It's a very nice stone to work with, and you can put that in your bath water as well. Um, so if you're highly sensitive in the workplace, also take your shungite, um, your pyramids, um, black turmoil, uh, labradorite, um, bronzite. You can use these in your pocket. Um, you can use turquoise and pyrite as well to strengthen your personal energy field. So those are all very affordable, very easy to obtain. You can cleanse them every day under cold running water for one minute. Um, this empowers you with an approach to stop being a victim and to become focused and happier, your true birthright. And being sensitive is a very useful skill to have in jobs. Believe it or not, when you're sensitive, it shows that you're more alert than most people and more awake. So now we're going to take a look at the Native American stones. But first, I'm going to have you hold uh, the honey calcite and the lithium in your hand, one in each, and just see if you can detect the information and how they feel. And then you can pass these around and just put them on the table back there. The different types of crystals that I love working with are the ones from Lemuria. And um, they're pink. And they do come in different shapes. This is double terminated um, on both sides. And this one is like a little, um, I call it like a cone almost cylinder in a way, if it wasn't uh, treated. But these actually make a sound. Um, I don't know if I have a, maybe we can use this here. Well, it has an interesting tone to it. Uh, this is too heavy, but I have a lighter one that energy. I actually. Ruby, is that what that mm -hmm. is? Yeah, the, the ruby is a very um, beautiful energy. It's very strong. It's a strong energy, and it strengthens the auric field. So I like using the ruby for that reason. I don't know if this guy is gone or not. And this one is the Sacred Seven, which is a very beautiful piece. Um, this one, it changes the vibrational uh, level of all people and the planet as a whole. And it has seven different properties to it. Um, it's a purple... So you've got amethyst, you have many other things in this, just this one. It doesn't have just one property, it has many, including a crystal. It's very beautiful in different hues, different colors to it. And I love working with aquamarine, which is also very softening. If you're hardened by life or you're bitter, an aquamarine will bring you back to that watery, beautiful, flowing energy that you can have. So aquamarine, this is a museum piece that was given to me. It's very beautiful. They make great wands, too. They make great wands as well. Wands, yes, yes. Beautiful, yes. Um, and here's Madagascar is the oldest place for crystals, the oldest place. And this is one from Madagascar. The blue is the most difficult to find, so I'm always looking for blue. Um, these particular blue, blue ones from uh, Madagascar. But these have very beautiful property and energy, and blue-gray and green and all sorts of different properties on them. And they have a piece of the ocean. They just almost store the entire ocean in them. They're very beautiful. Oh, look at that beautiful blue. Uh, this is from somebody who mines them. It was also a gift for me, and it's a very gorgeous blue. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a blue, uh, purpley color. It's just lovely, a lovely piece to work with. Um, it actually makes you more high-minded. So if you have any thoughts of, of um, hurting yourself or anyone else, and holding this energy, it's almost impossible to have those thoughts. They kind of just wipe out um, the ability to do any harm. And it's really, they're quite beautiful. Can, can it be held or...? Mm -hmm. Can we hold them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be careful because these are being, um, the mind, there's only one place, and so there aren't many places that have Where's them. the mind for that? Um, I, mind. Oh, you would have to ask that. Is it, Tanz you know. is it Tanzania, <laughs> since it's Tanzanite? Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. That's it. Very easy. And, of course, an amethyst wand, which also you can use to take the pain out of the body. 
Um, these are great for headaches as well. And coral, a coral wand, anything red is good for pain, taking mm. away pain, anything red. Because they're powerful, they're passionate. And if your will and desire is to remove that pain, then it will do its job. Especially the red, you mean? Mm -hmm. That's coral, yeah, oh, a real coral. Hold yeah. the red. You have to be careful with, uh, with that one because... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is that? You leave them out in the stone a lot, they will fade. What mm -hmm. is, yeah, you can't put certain per, certain stones of color. You can't put in the sun. That's true. They will fade, and that's why I say be very careful when you do energize any of your crystals or anything else. Just a little bit of sun, and actually now What's it's amped up. One? Our sun is amped up, even though it's also amping down. I know that's an. Do you know the name uh, of that one? That she's okay, in? the tanzanite comes from the southern mountains in Austria. 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 Oh wow. Yeah, and this is amethyst. That's amethyst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. You're so knowledgeable. Well, no, she has a book. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it's just... This, this is an emerald. <laughs> as it is. This is an, actually known as lavender blue zoocytes. So. And this is an emerald in its raw form. Yeah. And it does have black in them. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's what it looks like. Yeah. And often you'll even find an amethyst with a crystal. Um, it's very interesting. You find like those with different crystalline formations in them as well. Yeah, yeah, you do. At the house. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. So should I pass these around? Yes, yes. Would and you like to have another one? We, we have them all. Yeah. Right. You take okay. this one for pain. Oh, thank you. This is angelite, and it's a beautiful color, beautiful energy, and I use these uh, for. Uh, when you're touching the back or you're touching a sore point, you might put it in and just do one, two, three and leave it pushed in a little bit and it creates a nice softening of a muscle uh, tightness, a muscle knot. Yeah, so I use these really for the warm. muscles. Did you make this? You'd yeah. be surprised how far stones like that can yeah. go in yes. once it starts to relax and get surprised. It could even scare you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're very powerful. And you can, like you said, the pressure, I mean, depending on the pressure that you are able to withstand, but they will take knots out, and it's it really lovely. It feels like this melts in. Yeah, it does. There is a melting. I agree with you. There is there is a form of melting. It almost seems like it melts. Yes. Yeah, thank you. How are you doing that? And one more. This has a window. I'll give it back. This has a little window. This is also a Lemurian. And the windows are very powerful. Um, you can actually see through them. And you can see the future. You can see the past in them. Um, beautiful property. And when you have one that has another crystal growing out, that's like having an extra family member. And I like that. I like that it's uh, like a community one. And it's, it's very beautiful. And this, as you can see, has lovely energy coming from it. It's just a beautiful stone. Now, where crystal. would you get something like that? Oh, you can get them all over, and you can get them online. You know, look for crystals. Oh, listen, look. listen, I don't have a computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you don't have a computer, there are specialty shops, so um, you can get them anywhere in our area. Um, and Magic will probably have some right. of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but also rock, rock shows, you know, when the rock shows come into town mm -hmm. and they're in the paper, um, places like that always carry them. Um, you can find them through other people willing to trade. Um, I belong to a geology club, um, so we do have a, a geology club here, and I belong to them, and they trade theirs, and mm -hmm. uh, they'll sell and buy and barter, mm -hmm. and that's how you can also get them. You want to one. Now this one um, has sure, water Sherry, you want to give her oh. to hold Which one? one? The one you just had. What was the, the long one? one? The long one? one for... for um, the one you just had in your hand before. With, for, for the muscles? For the muscles. Oh, yeah. this one. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to be very careful of that, yeah, because they, they, they're very special. Okay, this one in particular has a water spot, and they're very special. Um, this is a, a crystal formation somewhat like uh, the Herkimer's. And it has a little water property right within it, so that water is millions of years old inside that and it actually moves there is a water crystal i don't know if it can be seen in there but it will actually move and it's very mm -hmm. beautiful and so you can purchase one of these these are rarer to ha to hold the water crystal of the earth um, from an ocean it can be raindrop it can be anything and it's it's in there but you have you to watch it, it too. 
Is this an expensive? In uh, where? Opals. Opals, yes, yes, opals because have, they're underground and they get the rainwater and yeah, from if you Australia. Have raw opal, you have to keep it in water if it hasn't been sealed or mm -hmm. it will dry out. Yep, yep. This is called a hollandite. It's a star quartz, and the Pleiadians, they say that the Pleiades sent these, but they have a little black star in them. I don't know if you can see that on the top. Can you see that star? Yep, from here. Right here, can you see that oh, yeah. better? Yeah. There's a little star in there, and it's a very special quartz, type of quartz and also what's in it. But this is um, one of those personal things you want on you. You want to wear it all the time. It's so sweet. It has very sweet energy to it. It's like a tooth. <laughs> Without, without the light, I think, yeah. Without. Oh, okay. Seems better. Um. And that was a gift to me also for my birthday. So is this kind of thing expensive? Um, none of these are really... They, they, they do cost, but you can save up. And again, you don't have to have an, a collection like I do. You only need to have one or two special ones that you work with that stay close to your body, stay close to you, um, that you work with. Um, this one is another one. This is an ancient grad, granddaddy, and he's um, of a Lemurian, and he has wonderful properties. I don't know if you can see the rainbow inside it, which caught a little bit of water inside. And he's very old. But the older, the, usually, sometimes the uglier the rock, sometimes it's the, the most valuable also. <laughs> so um, it's very interesting. It's yeah. like that with old ladies, too. <laughs> So if it has a triangle on it, um, for instance, this has a triangle. I hope that that can be seen as well. I'm trying to look for my triangle. It's a record keeper, and those are very special. They're wonderful. They actually have a triangle on it. I don't know if you could see that triangle that's right there. There's a little triangle. Can you see that? Yeah. And that's very special, the little triangle. Yes. And if you can see that. There's a triangle yeah. up here on, yeah. on here, yeah. yeah. And the triangle will actually give you information about um, its era, era that it, it's, it's just amazing what you find. Now, I went through a cave in Virginia, and I don't know how this happened. I was actually pushed. And if I were to fall properly um, and not harm myself, I actually had to handle a newborn crystal being born and coming up from the earth. It was the softest thing and the wettest thing I've ever felt in my life. They say do not touch them, but I was accidentally shoved by another person and I've never touched anything that felt more alive. It was like it was electricity and I was absolutely astounded by it because I thought this is alive. Now it's growing, yes. But it's not the aliveness that we know. It's not the human energy. It's just something. I don't have an explanation for it. I was just shocked that when I touched it, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You know, it was like you felt mm -hmm. like you were you're going to talk to it because you felt the life in it. Yeah. And it's very soft, very wet, very beautiful. Like a baby's bottom, it was just very soft. And I just didn't expect that. Or touching a manta ray. For instance, extremely soft. Or a dolphin is the softest or a dolphin, thing I've, yes. tu I've touched. Um, then, so we'll go into the Native Americans uh, quickly. And you can purchase these right here. And you can purchase these at various specialty shops or online. And where there's rocks or where there's anything that has uh, books, perhaps. And you put this on it and it amplifies colors. And it's really beautiful. And at night, it's especially wonderful for meditation. So you'll see the green. and you'll, Now, this is a smoky quartz, so this is darker. Mm -hmm. It's not a clear quartz. But it's very beautiful, the colors that are emanating from it. So is it just a regular light underneath? It's an LED light. LED light, yeah. LED light. And so the colors are coming from the stone? No. no. Right here. Right through here. Stone. Coming through that. But there's colors and in that? And then you put it here. And then you put there's it. colors in the stone. There's minerals in the stone mm -hmm. and a different frequency of lighting. Mm-hmm. Makes the mineral color stand what out. Makes that light. Did you see that plug? That's it's battery out. operated. Yep. I see green coming through. Mm -hmm. Various colors, very and beautiful. Green, red, pink. Oh, that'd be nice for me. So those colors are actually in the in the stone. What it does is it reflects the color of the the internal stone. Mm. So when the green shows, it hits 
anything that will Sensitive manifest yes. that green. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's like a feast for the eyes, and that's why it's really special. This is not that expensive to purchase at all. Yeah. So anyone can have these, and they're really fun. And they're beautiful at night especially. I love to look at them to, to calm down, to relax, to let me know that it's bedtime, mm. like a bedtime ritual mm. almost, and that it's time to go to bed. And I look at that for a few minutes, and I turn it off, and, and then Something I sleep. Something interesting. You're, you're talking at the beginning about just starting off and just clearing yourself and just writing what comes out of you. If you do yeah, that sure, by the light of one of those crystals, it, it's an experience you have to have. You mean to put a clear crystal on it? To put a crystal even like that on it and just have that as your writing light mm -hmm. and just start writing what comes to you? Mm -hmm. No, you're right. Will... Yeah, things will just come to you out of the blue. You're right. And, and that's really amazing. This is an Andara crystal, and then I put it on the colored plate. I, I read an article one time, it circulated for about a year and then they snatched it offline. Um, they did some sort of scanning of one of the big crystal skulls in Mexico and they said that there was, they claimed there was so much data inside that skull mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they would have no way how the data got in it and they couldn't even open it, it was so big. And then suddenly that article just poof, disappeared. Well, there. Know? There was a famous man here who came here with his skull, and he um, also had another crystal, a very long crystal, and it was amazing. Um, what we saw was um, an actual face, and I call it the lion people. In this elongated crystal, you can see rainbows of color. It was actually a face of a man that looked, had a lion face. It was the most amazing thing. And he says, are you seeing it? I said, oh, and we all saw it. And he had a special skull. And his story goes that he toured around the world with his skull. And when he came to us, we were at Confluence Park. We have the two rivers that meet, which is very special. And the Native American people congregated here as well. And they passed through because it was a war path. But they did pass through, hunt, eat, picnic. and. What happened was we would take the skull to our head and we would each say a prayer, whatever it was. So we programmed that skull and then we put it back down. No sooner had he taken it back to New York City in a limo and he got out of the limo without it, without his skull. And he was going to a big uh, seminar. He was, you know, showing the skull and he gets out and immediately he calls it back you know, the, the driver. He hadn't even gone anywhere practically with that car and that skull was gone. They tried everything they could, the trunk, the inside, the outside. I have had crystals literally disappear. It does happen. It actually happens. And I have to say, okay, I didn't need them because I have no idea. And I'll never forget when it landed, one of my crystals landed in somebody else's house. And she says, I do not know. She says, I did not take that crystal. I don't know how it ended up here. I said, I've heard stranger stories than this. So I said, it's yours because it wanted to be with her. And I apparently was done with it for whatever reason. And it does occur that you could purchase something quite expensive and it will it's almost like it dissipates, just like um, in the movie Star Trek and Be Me Up Scotty. And the molecules dissipate, and then they come back together. Now, it seems outrageous, but how I started with these crystals is even more outrageous. One morning, I woke up with a crystal in my hand, and I was eating it almost. And I woke up, and I go, oh, my God. I must be nuts. And I looked in and said, and I had a crystal in my hand. Well, I had not one crystal in my house. I had no collection of crystals. And I'm thinking to myself, what is it trying to tell me? Oh, I need more silica in my body. So I went out and I got silica, but it still didn't answer, hey, what was going on with this crystal? How did, where did it materialize? Nobody gave it to me. And so I don't know. And I don't know where that original crystal went either. It, it did disappear, honestly. But that's when I started hungering, thirsty, thirsting, and even wanting more knowledge on crystals because it behooved me to think that this thing, this foreign object in my bed, well, where did it come from? How could I have manifested that? I don't know how. I didn't understand the whole procedure, but I wanted more, and that's when 
I started gathering them a little bit and trying to find out more information about the stones in the earth. So I'm not a, a big fan of getting huge pieces out of the earth. I believe they stabilize and that there are crystal spirits in them and they're meant to stay underground. Um, I don't believe that we should be taking huge chunks out, no. But little ones, they're okay and you don't need many to collect. Like I said, you only need a few and they're wonderful. Now, um, as far as the Native Americans, I have a little story about them. Um, one thing I want to show very quickly, when I take pictures, these are the Andaras here, and this is what they look like, just taking a picture. Doesn't it look like they come to life? Yes. And they just, you know, they show for me. I say that you show for me, and they're just beautiful. It's almost like you can feel the energy coming off this. These are just a few of my Andaras. And it's just a beautiful uh, feeling. You feel good when you see this. Again, it's like a feast for the eyes. All right, so the, the, a little story about the Native Americans. Um, the other thing, let's see if I have that here. I'll go really quick here. Give me a second and I'll find that. Okay, so the Native Americans, um, they ate berries, dried salmon, bread made from camas root, flowers that were so blue that they looked like a lake instead of a field. They looked like a lake, they were so beautiful. And they're C-A-M-A-S root. And if famine, they had to eat their own horses. And that was very sad for them. They did not want to eat their horses. Um, but sometimes there were treacherous winters and so on. And sometimes this is what happened. Their medicine, they would use the roots of fennel and various mint. And one cure for a fever and swollen glands was to boil onions and beeswax. And then they would rub this on the neck and the chest. Um, and they say today that using the onions is a very um, healthy experience for the body. Um, it can also preserve it. Honey and onions and a little vinegar apparently is a preservation for the body as well. If you were to put that in the liquid. With onions, if you cut an onion and put it out, it actually draws bacteria, do you? It draws, it, it draws bacteria to it. Mm. So mm. You, when you actually cut onions, you yes. should either use all the onion or throw it away yes. or put it in a place where you're never going to use it mm -hmm. so that it takes the bacteria out of the air. But what you can't do is put the onion into the fridge and then use it again because it will draw the bacteria from the fridge. Really? And oh, that's how it will oh, create thank you. stomach problems. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's good because I was going to mention that because most people don't and they're not aware of that. That's very true. Yes. Um, now, the expression, the moon when. So what they would do is they would say when the moon is this size or this length or this, you know, showing, um, that's when they'd be back. So they would say, well, the moon when the geese shed their feathers. Or they would say, the moon when late August, or the moon when the ponies lose their fur, which would actually denote May, perhaps around May, in springtime. When the moon is, is how many days it took to travel. So they would all say, when the moon is a crescent shape or whatever, then it's, that's how long it's going to take me. So that may take, you know, whatever days. Now, there was a famous Native American woman, and she was Sacagawea, and she gathered wild roots for voyages, and she was the first woman to accompany any explorer that we know of, over 4,500 miles. That is enormous in those days to have traveled that amount, and especially for a woman. Women were not allowed to travel or be explorers. She had two children, Pomp, and she had Lisette, and she died after Lisette at the age of 25. Mm. They sailed the ocean and she saw whales. And that to her was one of the most magnificent creatures that could possibly be on this earth were the whales. She felt very fortunate to have been able to have spied them. All people who were voyagers were paid handsomely. She was never paid anything. The St. Louis Expedition of 1800 and 1806, Clark said, Shoshone women and Sacagawea has been of great service to me and to many people as a pilot through this entire country. He educated both children of hers and he adapted them and Pomp became a Western guide and a trader as well. And during their crossing, 
their clothes had rotted from the rain, and the men had to be butt naked, as you might say, or sail naked, and they also became so itchy from fleas. Not a glamorous job, indeed, that she had to go through all of this. Another woman who advocated for Native Americans was Jackson in 1800s, and she was put in the newspapers. And their clothing was leather from deerskin. So you see, the person who never went naked was Sacagawea. Her clothing outlasted anything that the American man had made or the, the white man had made. So hers was leather from deerskin or buffalo hide, and the capes were made of sea otter skin. They carved wood helmets for the chiefs, and they, they used goat and wool robes. They made jewelry out of shells and beads. So we'll take a look at some of these here. Um, you, you can bring um, the camera up closer if you'd like to look at some of these. This is very interesting because the worry stone, you know, often we think the worry stone is from other countries, in fact. European countries because they originated and possibly the Greeks, the Romans, and all of them. Um, it's everywhere a worry stone is found. But the Native Americans were the first. And this is an actual worry stone that they took the thumb and they did this. So they the very them. first is the actual Native American stone. They call them in the Celtic tradition the cupping stones because you cup them in your hands. Mm -hmm. mm. And then, yep, the mm. cupping stone. Exactly. Very good. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Now, these are very beautiful. These were found on a private land, um, and so they were on a person's home, and they owned this land. And one of them is the diamond shaped. I love the shapes that I was able to procure from the land. And it has an end where they cut that in their hand, and then they used it to scrub the herbs or clothing even. They used uh, some little spots, little things. They were very meticulous and that's the diamond shape. Of course, this looks like, somewhat like this, an arrowhead, and this was used for scraping out fish. Now I have to tell you, it's almost like they tell me what these are used for, so I don't know that anybody else has the same story, but they come to me, they give me a vision, and then I know what they're doing. So with this, they score the fish and cut it out, and that's what this was used for. And this was, of course, an arrowhead. That's, that's, that spearhead could have been used for some reason. Yes, Dealing yes. the fish. Yes. Yeah, to spear it. And this was to take out the guts of the fish. Yeah, exactly. Like some of the, the parts that you don't want. And this was the medicine man that used this stone. As you can see, it's completely smooth all around and it's indented, and he took his herbs, and he would lay down on the ground. They, they like to be comfortable. He'd lay down on the ground, and he would just grind his herbs for medicine. And then he would go in the teepee, and he would place it on the body. And they would have several men uh, who were around you, and some of the women were allowed, not very often, but they were also allowed to help out. Uh, these are tools that they worked with with their hands to push and shove and tap and and uh, a little one like this and, and a larger, a little bit larger piece for corn, um, for flour. This is the triangle shape, which they actually revered because they used the teepee. And the teepee was an ingenious invention. It allowed air and heat some to come in, some to leave. I mean, it was just a great invention. And they loved the triangular shape because it actually stood, of course, for the spirit guides and the Holy Ghost and so on. So they, they, this is one of the triangles of theirs. Now on this, this actually has a fossil of a little shell on it. Now these were taken to BU, our, our uh, community, our college, and they were looked over by an archaeologist, and so she told me these are absolutely the real deal. Now this is flat on this side, and a nice, a, a small woman could grab this right here and start using this side and scrape. And that has a handle on it. And as you can imagine, these tools took a while to make. But they were also very durable. They last forever. They're part of the earth. 
So once made, they, they had them. This is another one that was almost on a, a wooden, they think that it was on some kind of a wooden, uh, I don't know what it was, um, but it was on a, a wooden piece, a long wooden piece, and then they scored it with twine, a type of twine, and then they would use it for various things. Um, it's a they, hoeing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this has, you can see the, the markings on that. Now this was a knee pad, interesting, um, used like a knee pad. They would actually take their knee and use it to stabilize it while they were doing their work with the food, grinding or, or making food. And this was used somewhat like a knee pad. I mean, it wasn't so comfortable. But remember, <laughs> they had leather. They had leather which was thick and, and soft. Uh, they softened their leather. So they had very soft clothes and padding. So it's a little different than we are today. We don't they have used this. stones to soften the leather. Yeah, yep, and that too. The hot stones. Yep. Now this is one of the ways they made crystal was to use their hides, their deer hide, and they would make and give these as gifts. If they had a crystal or a particular stone that they liked, they would use it in here and they would gift you with one of these. And they would just wrap it and then knot it. Very simple. Um, their purses were also very simple. A little knot up here, um, just a continuation of knots here coming up, and then they would cut it and score it, and then this would open up as a flap, and they would keep anything that's special and dear to them in this. So it could be their beads, um, it could be what they want to trade with, especially the women. Medicine bags had herbs and yep. stones and, and small symbols inside of them mm -hmm. they use for their journey. Mm -hmm. And those were a little larger usually. They weren't quite as small as that one, but yes, you're right. They had healing ones too. Yes, yes. And this, of course, is a little um, whistle made out of wood. What is the green on it? A feather. And they did dye. They actually did know how to dye their clothing, mm -hmm. and they used all the fruit, everything natural. So. Yep, the berries, and so they could make, they could get green, and they would even squash the leaves and, and pound the leaves to get a green like this. And that's a feather? It's a whistle, oh. and you can see here on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Is that from a sun ceremony? Uh, yes, actually, yes. You have to, you, you hang, you have to blow through that when you, as long as you're conscious, and when you lose consciousness, that's when they bring you down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They also used it, though, if anyone was looking for them, like family members, and they would blow a whistle just to let them know where they were at. So that was one of the things. They did use it as a form of communication, too. Yeah? Okay. So um, let's see what else I wanted to talk about with these. Okay. So one of the ways to clear your crystals or any of your stones is through one of these, which is a, um, it's called a, a med vibe. Med, medi vibe, actually. And you can purchase this. And it's ohm. And I would hit it like this, and then you would hear the noise on either side of you. But you can go over your crystals like this. So this is one way of cleansing them, is using these. Hmm. And the other way, this is the talking stick, by the way. So when the children, if they weren't behaving, they'd say, okay, here's your talking stick, and you can talk now. And after that, we have to get do our work and you have to do your work and they would have different chores but sometimes the kids were a little unruly their children and they would use a talking stick so they started out with the children but then it became the wampum and it became ceremonial so it didn't really start out as that at first and then it became even fancier for the adults the children had little things on it and they made little beads but it wasn't so fancy but this is an adult talking stick and then each one would take turns, and they might say a blessing, or they might talk about something very important. The women were actually the chiefs. This is kind of a little unknown secret, but you didn't want to cross grandmother. And she was basically the one who kept the clans together. So they would go to the woman first and see what she thought of. Uh, of whatever they were doing, whether it was war or whether it was peace or whether it was a family matter, they always went to grandmother first. And then they decided what to do from there on out. But usually they listened to her. The elders were very, very well respected. 
Now, this is called, um, I'm going to show you some of the fossils, and we can put these up close here a little bit. Um, this is from Canada. It was from a glacier, and I call it the Buddha belly. It looks like a little Buddha belly. It's also known as a fairy stone. And the fairy stone as well. They're called that as well. Yep. The fairy stone. Yep. And they're lovely. Um, they're a specialty item. You won't find these everywhere, but you can purchase them. This is also has uh, various fossils on it. And it has like a, a plant mark. But then someone said, well, what was the pressure of how that plant? And could it be a little bird, a little bird foot? And I, you know, they, they do actually have something very similar like this on, on uh, one rock that is on the internet um, that is also in a museum. So I'm not sure. But, and then of course, these are natural fossil formations of shells, various shells, and even some little creatures there found along the Susquehanna River. And all of these I got on, on already private property with permission. So these were my friend's home. So do you feel you can go outside and pick up a stone and it will speak to you? Well, he thought that they were nothing. And he laughed at me. And he said, I, you know, I'm sorry you're going to make a fool of yourself when you go to the university <laughs> and find out that they are not American things, that they're just rocks. And he kept saying to me, they're just rocks. Who said that? Oh, the person that had these on Oh, I see. I see. Because he couldn't figure out, you know, and, you, and I'm telling you, these are dirty, dirty rocks. You have to lovingly wash and scrape and dry. I mean, these rocks take a long time to clean out of, you know, it could be a long, long time that these rocks have been buried underneath or even on top. So they're very, very dirty, yeah. Now the other thing, so continue. So what we have here, these were called. No, 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 no. I meant oh. about when about taking those to the. Oh, so when I went to BU, um, our university here in Binghamton, uh, the archaeologist department said yes, these are real deal, and she had seen some of them, and she she would remark, well, I've never, I haven't ever seen. Oops, sorry, I haven't ever seen the diamond shape, for instance. You know, um, there are a few things that she's never seen, and she said they were nice specimens of the Native Americans, and that they're fully formed. Many of these are broken. Um, when you get a lot of these, they're chipped, they're broken, and these weren't. So. Was it in the water, in the creeks? Um, no, they were on the land. On the land? Yeah, they were, on the banks of, of his, and he owned the, that particular land, not, not, not in the water, but I didn't get these in the water, they were on his land. Yeah, they were all on where he would mow his lawn, you know, yeah. And then these were special, these were terms of endearment, I call them. Um, they were given as a proposal to marriage or engagement, and they were called the fairy stone. And when you look in these, and these are from reeds being driven in them, and naturally driven in them, it's not artificial, they're actually just kind of cut in through a reed perhaps. This one had a, a, a branch stuck through it. And what you would do is you would look through them, and I can see you so clearly, they totally focus in on the smallest object. So they're kind of magical, even to me. The Celtic call them holy stones, and they're actually, um, they will take you into the dimension mm -hmm. of the fairy world mm -hmm. and the future when you look through them. They're called divin mm -hmm. divinational stones as well. Mm -hmm. So they would use the hide, and they'd wrap them around the girl's neck. Now this one's a little heavy. I wouldn't imagine that she had it. But a, a male might have had this one. And you look through it, and you have to look through it because they're the most amazing rocks. They just, um, you know, and I'll, I'll give it back, and then we, you can circle around from the back. He's got it. You have them. They have, yeah. they have a nice Thank large you. one in Scotland standing. Oh, I bet they're they beautiful. Curl, curl this, they call it a hagstone. And yes, you, that's you, you can look through it. Would and you like this? Supposedly see the future. Yes. Um, unfortunately, somebody came along and carved a big cross on the back of it. It was uh, originally, like, they wrote records of uh, battle, a big battle that took place there, mm -hmm. pre Christendom times. Yes. On one side. Somebody came along, a king later on came along and had a big cross carved out on 
who knows what they wiped out on the on the other side of the stone to do that. But yes, yeah. and we have um, we have one called Spanish Hill that was a part of a glacier, and um, people now own that. It's private property, but they had some interesting things that they found on that proper property even prior to these people that have it. But it's called Spanish Hill, and you can look that up. And um, there are many tools, many you know, interesting items found there as well. So, um, I want to talk about this here. They took stones and they took their clay and they would make different clay things and different stones within them. Um, this has a stone here, then a stone, a red stone here, and then their clay. And they would make a little picture and they would gift it, especially for christenings. So, um, and sometimes they would draw pictures. This has been way under uh, dirt, so you'll see these little markings, but that's really not a picture. But you can see that they're very unique and that that's a piece of clay in there. And so it probably had a design on it. And then this is a different red stone here. I don't know if you can see that. Mm. It's a little dark. Yeah. You want me to put a light on it? This is pretty cool. These, you don't find these. Let me Maybe see if you I can... Maybe put the light on top. I'll put the light on top of it. You can see it. But they, they use these as gifts. Part of their clay is there. And then part of this red stone underneath. And then another... St hmm. It looks almost like a... Papoose to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were for christenings, like a gift. Christenings, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. But they would shape it and form it the way they wanted to. Absolutely. Now, the other thing is grids, and I don't know if you know about these, but these help us to manifest. And you could put little stones around these. Um, for instance, you can take, and I like using flatter stones for these. Uh, you can find little ones, a little flatter. And this shape, where they're, you might want something small like that. And they can be amethyst, they can be anything, they can be crystal, they can be jadeite. I mean, you can have all sorts of things here. And they all look like that, you know, more on um, that shape. And I use them for the crystal grids here. Now, if you were doing a serious crystal grid, you probably want pointed crystals like this. And you point them inward depending on how you want the energy to flow or you could point them outward so you might do it inward see if you manifest you know in a few days or weeks or you might want to point them outward depending and i like to do it one two three four five six so i like six of these and you would put your message in the center and then you would point them inward how would you to amplify the energy the center? pardon me how would you put your message in the center? Well, you just write it. And it can be, for instance, this looks like a rose, a rosette. So I might cut it out like a little rosette. I might actually put a little scallop, a little circle one, put just a couple of words of what I want to focus on, and then put that in where to amplify it. Um, there's various ones. Now you can do your favorite shape. What if you like a triangle? What if you like a circle? You can make up your own and because it's, the energy is emanating from you and what you truly desire, it will, it, it will work. So this is just a suggestion. This doesn't mean anything at all. You can use a geometric pattern. Um, what is your favorite shape? Is it like a snake? Then maybe you can, they don't have to be big at all and coil them around. Or I prefer, like I said, if it's really something you're serious about, use pointed crystals and do purchase at least six of those. But you can purchase, any um, type of crystal, it doesn't have to be a Lemurian, it doesn't have to be just a plain crystal, it can be amethyst, it can be anything, rose quartz. Usually working with the heart though, I do like to use rose quartz. And then you've got the flower of life, and you can put like, say that they're more rounded, you could put them in between here, you know, as many as you desire. But again, I would put my little bit of energy in the center, which tells you what you want, what you desire. It's all considered sacred geometry. Yes, and these are all sacred geometry, yep. yes. That's, That's the most potent one, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The flower of life, yeah, it's very beautiful too. Look Like the lotus, exactly like the lotus, yeah. The lotus flower is very beautiful. Okay, so we're going to do a quick, um, let's see. I'm going to do... Let's see here, give me a 
a second and I'll get these together. Okay, we're going to chalk a little bit, um, just various a little bit, about some of the most famous places for crystals, some of the most, the most powerful places. Um, there is the long gated story on this, and I may not want to put it on YouTube for various reasons, um, but it does work with Atlantean times and Lemurian times, as Plato had mentioned. Um, and there are certain places that have a power point to them on our planet. There's also grid lines, and on those grid lines, all over the world, um, there are pyramids. Obviously, pyramids are generators. Obviously, they do something or they wouldn't be here. And they're on specific lines. If you were to take a look at a map or a globe, they're specifically and strategically placed. So the ancients did know what they were doing. They were very brilliant, and we don't give these people credit. They were called, they were called serpent palms. Yes. What's the word? Serpent palms or dragon breath palms. Serpent yes. pods. Mm -hmm. There's a beautiful story about a dragon, by the way, and it's about a little girl who ended up in the woods, and she was lost, and it was very cold that evening, and one of the things that everybody was afraid of is that she'd been eaten by a dragon, but the dragon, because of its fire and because of its energy, it was able to create gems, and one of the gemstones was big ruby, and it coughed it up when the girl was laying, and she was so frightened but it kept her warm and the heat, and it became a flame. And it was then that she knew that this dragon wasn't anything to be feared at all, but he was to be revered and respected. And afterwards, she told the people that this dragon saved her life, and they knew by this fire, and this gem also created wealth within her community for everyone. When they sold it, they had food, they had homes and, and the like. And so they left the dragon to Rome, and it never bothered them, and they never bothered it, and they were, they were very happy to have the dragon in their land. They looked at it then. The dragon became a great omen of honor. So some of the places on our earth have a um, ring of energy. Okay, it can be the ring of fire, as we know, like Hawaiian islands and all of those around them as we see these volcanoes go off and everything. Um, and they would be called different things. So they would say the platinum crystal will activate this at 11, 11, 11, or things will be activated at 12, 12, 12. So the, the repeated numbers are very potent, very powerful. And today is 11, 11, by the way. Mm -hmm. so, today is 11, 11? Very yeah. Told, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm so into 11, 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not by coincidence that I'm actually doing this program because today it's actually a heightened energy. And so it's a... It's a very good time to do something like this. So there's a late hope oh, today is the tenth of November. Oh, maybe it's the tenth. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow is. It's tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, oh, tomorrow. tomorrow's the other. We're we're tomorrow. we're edging into there though. <laughs> <laughs> so the reference to a new state, it always shows up on my car. Eleven, eleven. Yeah, to a new state. Yeah, like mm. I moved to a lot of new state. Well, the number eleven represents gate. So when you have a twin 11, it's telling you that you are entering the pillars of that gate or moving through. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So there were caverns that held um, the master temple of crystals. And they were locked in what you call a hyper-dimensional field. Often, when things do not want to be found or seen, they won't be. And the timing's not right to begin with. So everything is activated and you learn when you're ready to learn. You know, it doesn't matter how many teachers push and shove, you'll learn when you are ready. Right. And the teacher appears when you are ready as well. So Arkansas was uh, specifically chosen to house the three major temple crystals. And it was already used as a crystal mining um, for growth and harvest. It was sophisticated living quarters as well beneath there. And there were labs that were pre-constructed. Now they're saying this goes back to the Pleiadian and beyond. So this is ancient, ancient. And Arkansas has one of the largest crystal beds underneath their ground um, ever discovered. Hmm. It also had um, unique geology of quartz, diamonds, magnetic lodestone, iron, limestone, and massive caverns made it the perfect incubator for crystalline plantations. 
So these were called plantations back then, just as we call plantation a, a sugarcane plantation or whatever. Yeah. The presence of magnetic metals in these crystal beds and magnetic field generators made it easier for the majestic Atlantean crystals to be placed in a dormant state for pre-existing facilities. So it was a very benevolent colony, they call them the blue-skinned Lemurians, that existed underground in Arkansas, as well as the underground base of Syrians. And the two were in agreement to be caretakers for the sleeping crystals. And so they were pre-programmed for a network grid, and it connects to the remaining five enormous master crystals placed in Brazil, Mount Shasta, Bimini, and two exquisite wisdom crystals placed under Lake, um, I believe it's called Tecaca, Mm -hmm. And that's a mountain, a special place. And they are specialized healing, wisdom, energy, and transport crystals. And they were used in the Temple of Healing, the Temple of Sound and Light, the Temple of Knowledge, the Temple of One, and the Temple of Toth, and the Ruby Temple of Fire, and the Temple of Regeneration. They were placed in areas of supreme importance for the new earth emerging in the 2012 ascension. And they say they were easily accessed through the Atlantean interdimensional tunnel system that would emerge as a mega vortex um, in our current times to come. So the emerald crystal of the divine feminine acts as a trigger, and then all the other temples kind of start to activate as well. So they called them the blue crystal of knowledge, the emerald crystal of healing, the platinum crystal of communication, and the ruby fire crystal of energy. Um, they had the gold crystal in Brazil, Mount Shasta was the multi-dimensional interface, and then Bolivia, um, Titicaca. So they were saying that all of these will eventually be activated so that they are used to heal the earth once again. Um, they Do know they that speak? there are... Yeah, I'm sorry. Do they speak about North Carolina because... Tiffany and all that had mines there for all the precious stones. Um, Brazil, Mount Shasta, and Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. So those Absolutely. are the major ones. They say you go in there and go through that, you come out changed. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Well, in, in Mexico. It's Mexico. a massive yeah. thing. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that. I was in Mexico and um, the I have a um, shocked crystal from the Yucatan, which they are no longer letting out, but this is when they did let you pick up the shocked crystal. And that was shocked by a meteorite in the Yucatan. So they have very special, and shocked crystal turns white, like a white chalk almost, but the crystal is beneath it. So it's very interesting. Um, I do have a piece of that from um, a long time ago, in fact. And now they don't allow it to come out of the area, I guess. So, seeing the crystal teaching spirit, um, I'm just going to have you close your eyes. And before I do, if, if you want, we can put a little bit of this on, and you, you can just dab your hand in, and you could put it on your neck or your forehead, and you just crush it a little bit with your finger. And you can put it on you. And it puts you in a meditative state. Isn't that it fair? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And crush it and just put a little in. Yep, it'll it'll stick to you. You know, from the uh, BCs you all the way it. into the early 20th century, you could be prescribed various gemstones and crystals to ingest for different issues. Yes. Either powder or as solid as a solid as stone. You have to be very careful with these crystals, though. Um, the so rock crystals especially, yes. They, minerals are dangerous to extract because, like I said, you get lung diseases, you get skin rashes. The people who mine these and extract these put their lives on the line. They really do. So for all this beauty that we see here on our table, people are putting their lives on the line to extract them. And, it's, uh, and it goes into the air. Um, pyrite and other things can cause all sorts of natural disasters even and for people in a city it's like a volcano uh, spewing out ashes mm. so you have to be very careful yes and there's also crystal there's such a thing as called a uh, crystal um, break off in glass and and powder and that can get into the lungs as well so anything that you're doing with these is you have to be very careful with and then, did you want to try any no. okay you want to try any? Okay, all right.
What does it smell so nice? What is that? It's the vetiver. Vetiver. It's the what? It's vetiver. called vetiver. That's a nice aroma. So you're going to close your eyes and we do like a little meditation with this. So seeing the crystal teaching spirit. Now you can sit comfortably. You can lie down if you'd like. Often though, when we lie down, we do fall asleep eventually. <laughs> that feels so good. But um, so sometimes if you can stay upright, it's, it's even better. Maybe roll a towel behind your lower back and under your arms to put you in an upright position. And that also helps to keep you alert. Now some crystals have more than one teacher within them. That's how powerful they are. And a crystal teaching spirit can become a close personal friend who has specifically chosen you to guide and work with. I do feel that my crystals, they were given to me, a lot of them, but they were also picked for me and picked by me. Crystal teaching spirits may make themselves known in sudden, dr dramatic ways, or they may choose to reveal the, themselves very subtly, subtly and gradually. Some of these teachers present themselves most sedately, so you think that your crystal isn't even working, it's not doing anything. But others love to clown and laugh at you, and they can disappear. Mine have actually disappeared, and believe me, I know every piece of my crystal. If my daughter takes one of my crystals, they are my family, my, my community, my children. I know exactly what piece is missing. Some appear frequently, and others only rarely. You may have a collection, and you only touch a few rarely. And others you will go to over and over and over again. The manner of their appearance and their teaching style matter less than what they have to teach us. So this following exercise is one way to begin getting to know your teaching spirit or your spirits inside a crystal. So you close your eyes and sit comfortably. And now pretend that you have a crystal of your liking. You're going to use your imagination right now. So make up your own crystal that you would like to have. You can have any color that you like. It can be blue, which is very soothing, pink, which is very loving, clear, which is very focusing and organized and you can see clear through it. <clears throat> and gaze into it. And you're going to ask the crystal spirits to communicate with you because the ancients certainly did this and got answers. So ask your crystal spirit to communicate with you now. Now gaze into your crystal and turn the crystal upside down, all around, spin it, stare at it, magnify it. You may see in the fractures and planes inside the crystal a picture of a human, an animal, or a plant, or a terrain, This is one of the teaching healing spirits who have reincarnated, reincarnated into this crystal. Ask this great spirit to be your teacher and to communicate with you and guide you. Now put the crystal on your heart. Visualize doing this, that you're putting it on your heart now. And you may hold your hands on your heart if you'd like to remind you of this and hold your heart and see if there is a message for you at this time. Ask your question and do it now.
And now, I want you to visualize yourself dancing. <coughs> You are dancing inside them. You have become one with your crystal. And you are thanking that crystal and the teacher spirit or spirits mm -hmm. as you are through. <laughs> and now you are going to visualize that this crystal has become as large as a house. growing larger and larger. And you feel very comfortable gliding, walking, skipping right into this crystal. It is certainly large enough for you. And you are going to imagine all the people that you love inside of this crystal with you. And they're all sharing a special secret. Listen to them now. And there are things that you never knew about those people. And they're revealing information, sacred information to you. They are revealing their hearts and their souls very sincerely, very authentically. This crystal is your personal friend. And these are many ways that you can actually access the information from the crystal. And now you thank all your friends for telling you one little secret about themselves or information they wanted to share. And when you step outside of the crystal, you feel a sense of graciousness and kindness and it just emanates through your entire body from the bottom all the way to the top and you want to visit this crystal again and again and again and give it the spirit crystal thanks for sharing its energy its space and its life with you Now there are certain stones that offer wisdom, amber, gold, clear quartz, coral, emerald, fluorite, jade, merlin crystals that I showed you. Now for imagination, you can use adventuring, carnelian, citrine, and this is citrine. It's not the heat type, it's actually the natural citrine, which is very, very pale. It's not a heated, although it does come in a dark, smoky color as well, more orange. But this is a natural one. The Native Americans would keep a special stone in a pouch that's made. And this is a pouch that was made in the Native American style. So you can put it inside it, made out of leather and then you put it inside you. Now citrine is a prosperous stone, prosperity stone, and so I keep this in my wallet with my money. You can put it in a purse or anywhere that you'd like to magnify prosperity. And it keeps it safe. And for the abundant stones, you would use your bloodstone, the citrine, a diamond, a garnet, a moonstone, ruby, or topaz. The guardian protection stones and the abundance crystals are crystal clusters like the one I showed you with two or more on them. 
You can keep them at your office and on your desk. Carnelian, Christophrase, and for openness is Amazonite. I don't have any of that with me, um, but Lapis, which I do have on, the Lapis is for openness, open-mindedness, um, changing your general uh, behavior. And for astral projection, you would use the double terminated crystals, which I do have. Um, okay, like this, this large one here is perfect for astral projection, taking you out of the state that you're in. It's almost like you're traveling when you astral project to another plane, place, or time even. This is also used for pain. You would put this point here and put it here, and it actually balances the body by doing this. Really? And you can also do that with your feet, placing, although you look odd, but you would place both feet in between this, and it balances the body. Yeah. It helps uh -huh. to restructure the body and the system. And again, you want to be solid. You want to be, um, you know, if you're on a cliff, this is a good one to have. I need to give you this back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. um, energy. Everybody likes energy. Um, Herkimer diamonds are great for energy. Um, so and that's the one that I showed you here. Herkimer diamond. That's great for energy. Um, the Merlin, uh, the ruby, the red one, the ruby, or the pink. Actually, ruby is, is pink. More pink than red. This is a ruby zoite. And this actually has the property of the green as well as the red. And that's very powerful. This has a lot of uh, ruby in it. But there's the green, which is the zoite. And that's a nice energy stone as well, healing stone, along with the bloodstone. If you're sick, put the bloodstone on you. Your spiritual development is often the purple stones, so that the amethyst and, and the sacred seven, this is called. So a sacred seven is definitely in a spe specialty shop, though not in every shop. You're not going to find these everywhere. Um, Serenity is the aquamarine, which is right here. <coughs> always, an aquamarine piece is always lovely, and that can be in jewelry form too, a little necklace or a ring or earrings or whatever you want to do with it, but um, you can even hold it in your pocket and that can be for men or women. The aquamarine was actually used for sailors. It originated with sailors. Um, it was to guide them in the ocean. They believed the aquamarine um, worked with the mermaids, worked with the creatures of the ocean, and they believed it kept them safe. So everybody had a piece of aquamarine on them originally. And it is like an ocean color. It's very beautiful. Uh, green topaz for forgiveness is very important. Anything green. And for love, you would use the topaz, the um, anything pink at all. So it's the rose quartz, um, pink tourmaline, anything like that at all will help. Mm -hmm. Now the red coral is actually used for romance. If you want to attract romance, you have the red coral. And the emerald and the garnet, which are also red, except the emerald is green, which I showed you that one again. Just hold it a little longer if you can, so we can, we can really stare at it. And that's the emerald. In its raw state. Mm. We need to wrap this up, Jerry. Yep, we're going. Yep. Okay. I'm all done. Okay, so we're just going to say a word that we ask that everybody remain safe and peaceful and have a great weekend. And clear the energy in the room. Now you can do this at every corner of your house and anywhere that you'd like to clear the energy. This it just works so wonderfully. Mm. And I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you, that was great. Yeah.
you have to remember that this is only a little of my collection. <laughs> so I have a lot of other things. The one thing you might want to do um, is look at some of the rock pieces here. We have a stone quarry. I think I talked to you about it, but I don't know if you saw this. This is the one with um, up near Vestal Hills Country Club. Mm. I was allowed to go on private land, and they have stone cairns, they're called. And you can find them in Scotland and all over, but we actually have them there. And this is showing my aura. You can see how it emanates up and over like an arc. Wow. Hmm, let me see. see. Let's that? see if I can have Well, a person had said that um, they want to try to get my aura, and I didn't think they could do it. And so they took a picture, and then they gave it to me. And there was my aura. And they said, I saw you going way out. They said, you're just amazing. <laughs> I was like, really? And then I see how you can see the rounded arc above. This is you? Yeah. yeah. Wow. How fabulous. Have you ever done the Karelian camera? No, I haven't. But here's where the, the, um, uh, the Native Americans that they have here, it says the Indians and other Americans were removed from the former um, burial ground on the Susquehanna, the West Bank of the Shenango River. And that's mm -hmm. over by, off of Clinton Street is their burial um, mm -hmm. statue of all the Native Americans that were moved. But I don't know. If, did you see the Karen, the stone Karen? Oh, these are um, pictures of my rocks, too. Can you see they, yes. they just come to life? I just love the life in these, you know? They're just beautiful. And this one, um, too, um, this is lapis. Hmm. You know? Which one's lapis? Oh, lapis. Right, this one here, yeah. lapis. Oh. The, the Native Americans' view of stones was a lot different from European. Um, I took place, it took, a, took place in some sweat lodges up in Louisville, yes, yeah. thrown by Grandmother Look Two Worlds. Look at the worlds. fire in the water. Two Roads? Her name was Grandmother Two Worlds. Two oh, worlds. and where was she again? Up in Lilydale. Oh. Mm. Is that in New York? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. It's Western New York. Fire. We should have that go. fire comes mm -hmm. up. And I'd love to go. Yeah. Water. And, um, Moving water. Isn't she told me that the, the stones were the, the ancestors. Mm -hmm. when, yeah. They're, yeah. when they're gathered together, they're called the ancestors. And mm. when, when you have a a sweat lodge, you have to feed stones into the fire because that's what radiates the heat out. And they, they call those grandmother, grandfather. In fact, there's a prayer the, the each that time. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting you say Each that. time you bring a stone those, in, yeah. you have to say uh, a prayer welcoming them in. Welcoming yeah. them mm -hmm. in. Yeah. I can't remember all of it, but I know it ends with Omaya mm -hmm. Tasi. And you put them on the fire. When they spark out, mm -hmm. they're speaking. Yeah. Mm, can and you say it again? Oh my. Oh my, oh my, Interesting. There's, there's a previous, nice. there's a prefix to it, but I can't call it. What does it say, time. actually? You know what it is? It's means? welcoming your grandparents, oh. welcoming oh, your, so cool. into the family. I just wanted to say they do have these, which are the books, and then you can get these underneath. You can get the, um, the stones, kind of and then what their meaning is. And what, how it applies to your life if you've chosen that stone for the day. And these are fun. Can you hold it for a little longer so we can get yes. it in the picture here? Yeah. Just hold the books. Yeah. You don't have to come close because okay. the camera goes to you. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Just be a, so there are books now answer. that you can purchase that ah. also help the meaning. What are they called? In your life. And those are cards? What kind of cards? Yes. And these tell, they give you a little bit of information about the stone, but also how it reveals in your life, how you've chosen that one, that particular card for the day. Mm. And there are many of these out. Really? So they're wonderful, yes. Yes, and they show beautiful pictures of the stones, very um, alive, very lifelike. Is there, uh, in that book, that they tell how to use the cards? Yeah, oh yeah, all of these okay. books do. Okay. And, and here's another one that I love, mm -hmm. um, which is an older one too. It's called Oracle Cards. Yeah, the oracle oh. cards. Yep. Okay. Love from the Earth also has their own. And their show, I don't know if you want to show. Yeah. Continuing. Crystal Diva cards. Mm -hmm. Rocks. And I'll show one more so be, people can purchase them if they'd like. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I see those? Yeah. <laughs> Where would you get those? Crystal mm. Diva cards. Oh, um, okay. I did get these at Imagica. Mm -hmm. Imagica? Yeah. That's in Bim in Binghamton, or otherwise yeah. you could probably get them online. It's just yeah. down the road. Yeah. yeah. And then, From here. Okay. You like that store? And they show pictures of. Um, I just crops. moved here. Like this oh, wonderful I crystal. This is yeah, another one that you can very purchase. Nice. Beautiful. For these. This is by a Native American gentleman. This is a Native American card deck. 
Mm. And he's very precise, and these are great cards as well. Mm. Oh, you see that? Uh -huh. And then they tell about them, yeah. And this is a small, small one. Yep. Well, thank you for all your time. It was great. Thank you for your time. It was wonderful. Thank you. Okay, now I've got to have a cookie. <laughs> I'll put it's so good. Away, but, yeah, yeah. You could take a picture of all it. Just yeah. go up and yeah, down. Yeah, I'm going Take these off here. Hey, you folks, is there an hour to travel all that? We've been sort of. Oh, yeah. We, we, we yeah. pretty much uh, yeah. we travel out. You do? Yeah. Yeah, we travel out a lot. Like, uh, we went to Stonehenge. We were there at midsummer when they, uh, uh, when the sun get some, um, broke. Tissues? You know, broke the horizon. We Did were you there. Like it? They yeah. blew the horn and all that. I just oh, it's going to take time to get to Stonehenge is a massive. You, pictures don't do so it justice. It's so much bigger so than what looks like in the pictures. Really? Imagine yeah. stones about the size of a bus.